Welcome to Chamonix in France for the, one of the most highly anticipated World Cups of the year. This is a star-studded event with a backdrop to match. My name is Matt Groom and I'm joined in the commentary box by climbing journalist Teresa Corti. Terry, as this drone pans around, what a beautiful place to go climbing. Yes, indeed. And thank you so much for having me tonight. Yeah, we're in the heart of Chamonix. Around us, we have a 360 views of all possible types of climbing, from the highest mountain in Europe to some, old, some boulders hidden in, in the forest. They are nestled away, but right now we are focusing on the lead wall that's about to pan into your shots. The crowd have been filtering into the Place de Bon Blanc. There's a carnival atmosphere, there's t-shirts being fired into the audience. The sun is setting, beers are flowing, and that is our lead wall. And Terry, we both looked at these routes. Women's on the left, men's on the right. For me, the word that sums up the men is thuggy, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> A, a real assault, a savage one right from the bottom. I just love that the, the, the head root setters is like, yeah, we don't know. I mean, it's just something's going to happen. They'll <laughs> float up or not. And the women's on the left, they'll be going first here this evening. Now, let's have a look at how they got to this stage from the semi-finals took place earlier today. Vita Lucan getting through into the final. Strong climbing from her as she came into the side pool. Pumped out to this Okay, bring the right hand in, couldn't make the head wall. Mia Krampel, similar kind of position, a real cruxy section here for the women. She decided to use the heel, just got the blocked crimp, but that foot pop sent her down. She qualified lower down the order. Helene Janiko in front of her home crowd was roared upwards. Awesome climbing from her. Got through that difficult bottom sequence. And Miho Nanaka back with a bang. Blonde hair, perhaps golden hair, who knows? We'll find out soon. She was working her way through the head wall and that cross through sent her down to the ground. And Jane Kim Terry, great to have her back. And you said, uh, you can't rush art. And we watched some art there, <laughs> didn't we? Uh, I hope that quote will make it far. <laughs> but yeah, it's such a pleasure to see her climb in, uh, in her impeccable style. And Nono Hakume at the top of the wall, held it for a second, got close in her second ever World Cup. She makes a final, and Jessie Piltz, can she make it three podiums out of three in three World Cups? She was certainly close to the top of the wall, just falling on that cross route. But the lady of the afternoon was Xian So. So, so close to a top, she set herself for the jump. Both hands on the jug, couldn't hold the slap right. Back to the ground for her. And for the men, they'll climb after the women. Luka Potoja from Slovenia just slipped into this final. Over the head will miss the move to the crimp. And then in front of his home crowd, Sam Abazu. What a performance from that young man. Really coming to his own recently. And how much would he love to win in Chamonix? Dokian Lee. He's already won a Boulder World Cup this year. Let's see if he can repeat things in the lead side. Big swing down from the head wall. Alex Magos, well, he podiumed last week as well in a legendary podium. Do go and watch that Vila Cup. He did well here today. Trying to move up to this block hole. Dropped it as he statically cracked towards it. But Stefan Schwedz did one better. Again, through the head wall, a part where lots of the athletes fell. Foot pop sent him down, awarded the same score. And then Colin Duffy, back in the finals, looking confident, super strong. Tiptoe down right, low feet, maybe not quite setting him up for that. And this man, Serato Andraku, what a season he's having. He never seems to stop climbing, never seems to get tired. And he came close to the top once again. He's Just getting missed. that quick draw. And then finally, Toby Roberts, heel hooking his way upwards. Near the top for Toby, but a fall sent him down. So that was how it happened. And Terry, what a mouth-watering prospect we have in front of us here. Women first on the left of the wall. Uh, exciting, and what an atmosphere here in the stadium. Yes, indeed. i got to say the Chamonix crowd is, is special. And uh, we also have... Uh, we also have uh, two French uh, athletes, so I, f I swear they're going to go insane. <laughs> well, there they are, the athletes lined up on the stage, ready and waiting. Jan Kim with a big smile on her face. She always steals every last moment to look at the wall. It's fascinating. Vita Lucan waves to the crowd. She's happy to be back in finals. Mia Krampel, her teammate next to her. 
People who have been asking about Yanya Garnbrett, she skipped this competition, as did I, Mori. I seem to get asked that question more than anything else. Brooke yeah. Rabatou, uh, who else is in here? Natalia Grossman. Adam Andra, There's Jakob quite, Schubert. Quite a few. But it does leave the podium open, which is exciting. Mia, an Olympian, super happy to be back on one of the biggest stages in climbing. And next to her, Helene Janicourt. She was pretty disappointed with her qualifying round when we talked to her. She's always a little down on herself. I talked to her earlier and she said, well, look, if I'm not topping, I'm failing. <laughs> it just shows her mindset. She wants to finish every route that she starts climbing. <laughs> That's kind of a really good spirit. And next to her, a lady who has topped many a boulder, many a lead route in her time, Miho Nanaka. Part of two Japanese women in this final. And overall, a really good all-around climber. I mean, she definitely proved it in the Olympics, coming in second after Yanya Gambra. Yeah, silver on the biggest stage. She can do it all. That was a heck of an introduction <laughs> <laughs> when Miho gets announced. This crowd being treated to quite a show here in Chamonix. It's all go. And then Zhang Kim, second finals in a row. She retired. She left IFSC comp climbing. She had her daughter, came back, and now she's ready to compete once again with the very best, and you wouldn't put it past her. She takes a moment. I don't think she can quite believe that she's standing there. Jane Kim gets announced. And then from a seasoned legend to a young newcomer. Nanoha Kume, her second ever IFSC World Cup. First finals, great to have her here, coming from the youth scene. Once again, showing the sheer depth to that Japanese squad. And Jessie Pill as well. Terry, remember her getting that medal in Austria? Incredible to be on the podium. She's just built on that momentum. In Vilas last week, she looked fantastic. You said she could do the three, two, one. I mean, I hope so. She, she has impeccable uh, climbing technique, and this route definitely will require it. And finally, she got highest on the route. She's probably the favorite on paper for the win. Sheon So from Korea. And she did win here before in 2019. It was her first ever World Cup win. So it must be quite a special place for her. Well, that's it. Those are our eight women. We've been whittled down from about 150 odd athletes in the qualifying round to 26 this morning, and now just eight have got to this stage. They will leave the stage as our camera shows off the looming mountains behind. 3,800 meters up to the Agua de Midi cable cut. And behind that, the Valley Blanche and all the wonders of Chamonix behind. Let's have a look at the observation of this route. And Terry, an important time happened earlier on off the broadcast, and I always find it fascinating to see how they read the routes and who they're reading it with. Yeah, who they team up with, whether it's their, their teammates or maybe some friends in the circuit, or what I was thinking earlier today, like also maybe athletes of the same height, because if they're a bit taller, sometimes, you know, the moves are going to feel short, and if you're a bit shorter, they're going to feel reachy maybe, so. Absolutely. Jesse Pilts. <laughs> Reading it with binoculars on there. Shen So drops down, grabbing her binoculars. And especially on the men's route, there's a hold around the corner, a pocket, that we had to go very far back to see that thing. Easy to see once you stand back there, but uh, quite blocked unless you get that view. Yeah, they do all the dance of uh, being up, up, up uh, right underneath the wall and then moving um, slowly backwards to see the whole route to the top. So hopefully they didn't miss the hold because it would be quite a shame. <laughs> yeah, the route setters do still kind of put it in. There are tick marks on it occasionally. So the women's route on the left, blue and white to start with. And that color scheme continues all the way up as it winds from kind of the middle of the wall over towards the left, wanders towards the arete and then back into the center for the top. Uh, Helene Janikor is taking a long moment to read this. Used to be an IFSC route setter, has come back, great return from her. And it is an interesting finals. You know, we're so used to seeing certain names in there, and we've already mentioned who's not here. 
So it could be a good confidence boost for a couple of athletes. Oh, definitely. And it's good. I think it's good once in a while to, to mix up the names. Yeah, a lot of the athletes will be waiting for the world champs. Just three weeks away now in Bern, Switzerland. It's a packed couple of weeks of climbing. Lots of content coming to the IFSC behind the scenes, some extra stuff. So do make sure you tune in for all of the action there. What do you think is the most exciting video that's coming? Well, it's in a planning stage, put it right. like this. But we are thinking of doing something a little bit similar to the uh, Dallas competition. Uh, for the youth, if you watch that daily show we put out, but we'll see, we'll see. Lots of lots of plans out there. But a real pack week: paraclimbing, lead speed, boulder, and the combined. And of course, Olympic places up for grabs for some of these athletes. Ten days of fun. Ten days of fun, exactly. So don't miss that. Beginning of August, World Champs. And we're a couple of seconds away here. You can see the camera guys gathering down on the left. The athletes will enter through the curtain in the middle between the speed and the lead wall. Now we're just being told there is a technical incident with the women's route. So something needs to be fixed on it, <laughs> which is why this delay is happening. I'm trying now desperately to look at what might be broken. But it could be, I could be anything. I'm gonna guess a long extended quick draw. I hope just not. Just because <laughs> from here. <laughs> oh, do, do you spot a dodgy quick draw, Terry? I know the one you mean, actually. I can see that hanging down. But it could be anything. I'm just guessing over here. Yeah, we're just calling things. It could also be a sign that's slightly wonky. So who knows? We'll find out. But uh, that's, and you can see on screen now, technical incident competition will start soon. But it gives the audience a chance to settle in. And they were gathering here for a good couple of hours before the comp started. People are sitting on pizza boxes. I've seen bouldering pads out there. Yeah, I saw a couple of bouldering pads. That's a, that's a smart move because it's going to be a long night. And I'm assuming they got here real early. Yeah, I think everyone was picking their spots. I remember the corona years a couple of years ago. It was quite subdued. People had to buy tickets. But uh, now they're allowed in. And uh, as you can see, they're enjoying both the spectacle, the food around the outside. EP have got a bouldering wall on the right. There are gear shops, food shops, everything you might want. And do go and check the speed competition that took place the other day. I was in the commentary box with Albert Oak, who's a bit of a legend in terms of coach analysis. He is a coach to many, many climbers, uh, like a volunteer coach as well. So he really cares about the sport. He really cares about bringing the sport forwards and uh, and all of his uh, athletes, who he calls kids, because it probably, it probably feels like that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, he's got a few, including Sam Watson, Emma Hunt, he works with a lot, so big in with the US team. So go and watch that broadcast if you haven't already. And we'll keep you updated with the situation here in Chamonix. No one's really doing any sort of fast move towards <laughs> wall, so I'm not quite sure what's going on, but there's probably a very in-depth judging discussion going on somewhere, which we're not party to. But I can't see any root setters running around panicking, so I'm, I don't think it's a big issue. A wobbly hold? How can it? No. I mean, if they spotted a wobbly <laughs> hold, that thing is about to fall off, and they should definitely fix it. So I'm hoping it's not that as well. Terry, you were just bringing up the worst I, case scenarios. I mean, it happened. <laughs> Remember Yoni Kruder, like, so many years ago, he, like, pulled off an undercling? Like, it can happen. It can, but I don't it think Yoni is on the wall. It makes but going. we don't want that. I don't, I don't think it would have fallen off from the wind, but maybe. <laughs> maybe. I, you never know. And let's just tell you a little bit about the routes while we're looking at them. The women's route is first, grey and blue holds. There's a big dead point around about the centre of the wall where we could see a couple of women fall, a few possibilities through there, and then an enormous technical jump to a pinch. Can you see the fried egg style holds, white, blue, and then white? That's the pinch that you jump to. Egg whites on egg whites on egg whites. Exactly. There, another view of the mountains behind. That isn't Mont Blanc as well, if people want to know. Mont Blanc's kind of, well, that's the tackle, in fact. So Mont Blanc out and to the right. Do you want to leave your details for a tour of Chamonix and the mountains? <laughs> Go and get a uh, responsible guide, not Matt Groom, is the basic advice for you. I could get into a lot of trouble up there. But some classics behind. We can see the Aguilem poking out the top. Traverse of the Chamois behind. The uh, Cordier Pillar, you can see that poking out the highest mountain on the top. Well, sort of middle of your screen. I'm still trying to work out what this technical incident is. 
maybe a light? I don't. I just... It could be a judging confusion between hold numbers. Someone might have spotted a discrepancy in the topo. That could happen. But certainly it doesn't seem to be anything on the wall. No. Just because nobody is going to fix it. Absolutely. Well, good opportunity, in fact, to go through some of the rules of uh, lead climbing while we have this pause. So bear with me if you're a seasoned veteran. Oh, hang on a sec. We have movement. We have a root setter tied in, approaching the wall, looking nervous with a B layer. So he first will climber of the evening. <laughs> first climber of the evening. We won't call this. <laughs> Although I have called a cleaning break before. I was uh, particularly <laughs> bored at one competition somewhere, and uh, I went through the brushing. Right. Let's go through the rules. Let's go through the rules. Yes. Okay. Well, when we flick back to our wall, it might be easier to explain what goes on. But the basic principle is that it's a, uh, a climb to the top. You start at the bottom, get into the top of the wall is the best score, where there's a blue circle, the word top written on it, and a quick draw. You have to get to the final hold, clip the quick draw. And talking about clip draws, you have to clip all of them on the way up from the route. And we actually saw an error from Mashihiro Higuchi missing the first quick draw, Terry, because coming into the second one, uh, a mistake we don't often see. Indeed, it was a bit of a shame. Um, also because he probably would have made finals. All right, let's have a look then at what this Teklinskin is. He's clipping into that draw. He's got a, what I thought was a brush out. So something around the corner. Play the guessing game if you're watching at home. Oh, they're adding a hold? They forgot right. a hold? That is <laughs> quite a big one, that one. It yeah. happens. Humans make mistakes. Yeah, the setters uh, have to pull down the entire semi-final routes, reset the final routes, test it, forerun it, put all of those signs up on the wall, make sure all of the bolts are blocked and that the route actually climbs as intended. And obviously, a bit of a mistake. I think it, it could be a blocker, you know. He's getting laser guided and he's going to have to forerun it a little bit here as well. Did he put on that? Yeah. So he's put on the hold quite high up and left. So yes, quite important, I think. I'm not sure he's aware that he's live on many TV platforms. I'm glad they spotted it before the competition started. We would have had a tough job trying to call that move yeah. if, it, uh, <laughs> if it wasn't possible. All right, well, the incident is being fixed. That green light is on the uh, yellow on the right. And while we have this pause, I'd like to draw your attention, actually, to the IFSC's response to the recent eating disorder and red S social media post by a lot of athletes and the retirement of a prominent doctor within the IFSC. Now the IFSC have released a statement on this. You can find that on the IFSC website in the medical section of that if you want to read that statement. It's an important issue, it's very complicated. The IFSC are listening to everyone's points of view. So go and read the statement and see what you think. But for now, we're on to the climbing. And very soon, a setter making sure the hole is clean and prepared and prepped. The laser beam keeps uh, beaming all yeah. over the wall. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's making me nervous, but I'm yes. hoping there aren't multiple problems here. Well, let's... Uh... We'll see at the highlights. All right, so the setter is done. I think it's clipping in. The quick drop. So I think we're almost ready to go here. He'll put that drawer in that's missing. I'm not sure, he might have to block it as well. <laughs> there we go, I was waiting for the crowd to applaud that one. Big move up and left. Clips incorrectly, pulls up, secures himself on the wall, and it's a safe second clip for Mr. Uh, Mr. Rootsetter. It's a constant fight against gravity, isn't it? This sport. <laughs> yeah, he he seems to have found some enemy. jugs, though. I mean, like, enormous holds he's pulling. I don't Still, know what the problem is. on an overhang. I'm fairly sure I could do that, Terry. I mean, actually, I don't think I could climb that. It's a very overhanging wall, 20 degrees at the top, and they've kicked that back a couple of degrees from last year's wall. And if you remember last year's comp, there was a giant volume right in the center of the wall, EP have built a new wall, working with the root sessors to design that. And it's a pretty intimidating thing, a slab of an overhang that just comes up over your head. Yeah, and they built it at 
quite early. I mean, beginning of June here in Chamonix, they were already setting it up. Yeah, so it's been waiting for a while, and it's one of the reasons that why this comp is so anticipated. It's just exciting. As, you, uh, as a Chamonix local, when you live here, as Terry said, you see the wall being built, you start feeling the atmosphere, and then on this last day, walking into the stadium area, I did get goosebumps as I crossed the audience, who were just sitting, waiting expectantly. <laughs> Now, that's the extended quick draw you were talking about, so I'm hoping it's okay. I mean, it's useful so far. I told you, jugs all the way. Jugs. <laughs> Huge jugs. I'm not entirely sure what is going on now, because he's replaced the hold, but that is the hold he replaced, and I think he's checking it, but... Okay. Now, I think we'll also see another observation from the women again, since they've changed um, the holds around. Yeah, it's a good point, that one. I'm not sure how they'll run that in the rules, whether they go back and inform them of it, whether they show them on the top, or whether they will bring them out. It's a good point, because they are... I mean, he's only really put one hold in. He's adjusting one now. Anyway, chance to look at the mountains, and you can see Surat collapse in the background there. And the mountains coming up from the Cosmics. The Cosmic Zaret, a super famous climb that comes up that skyline ridge. You can see that. Ending in the MIDI cable car, 3,800 meters. And we have been informed that we will see the women's observation again because of this new hole that they've added in. But I think that's good news. So the setter is coming down. Round of applause, deservedly so. <laughs> it's a high-pressure job, that one. I would definitely screw everything in the wrong way around, knowing my DIY skills. There'd be an upside-down hold in there somewhere. An undercling. An undercling, <laughs> perhaps. So, Chamonix Mont Blanc sign on the floor, and we're a couple of minutes away from restarting or starting our competition after that technical incident. Observation to come. So the women enter the stage once more. They're cheered out. Should just be the women. <laughs> Smiles all around. I think they can see the funny side of this. But they're definitely shining a light on, on what's been changed. Yeah, the setters uh, obviously want to make it as clear as possible after this confusion. So they've... Uh, showing the athletes where the new sequence is. But of course, the athletes will use this as an opportunity to reread this route, to try to get every bit of beta they can from it. I do think they seem happy because they get an extra six minutes. Yes, it changed a little bit, but at least they can uh, also reevaluate the route. And I'm sure they went back, talked about it. Yeah, exactly. So they've talked about it backstage. And they've prepped themselves and they get another chance to see it. So an opportunity to clarify a couple of things, perhaps, or go the other way. You know, you can overthink things sometimes. Having 12 minutes to observe a route is a long time. Climbing, always a psychological test, as much as a physical one at this level. Everyone is just so good. It's those little margins that make a difference. And so having a look. Anoha Kume and Miho Nanaka reading together. Jen Kim walks behind Shen So in a sort of mirror image of what she's doing. This is such an important moment for these athletes since uh, it's technically an on-site route. They only get to observe it from the bottom and they never climbed it before. So this is a really important moment for them to figure out the moves, where they're going to clip from, where they're going to rest, um, possibly yeah, find the crocs and, and figure out even different possible beaters on, on how to tackle it. Yeah, they get to see the route for the qualifying. They watch videos of that. Semi-finals is a similar system to the finals where they observe it just before, and then the finals are like this. Six minutes to look at the route, and then one chance to climb it. So if you're just joining us, Welcome back to Chamonix. We had a technical incident earlier on this evening on the women's route. A hold was missing. It's now been replaced. The women are reobserving the route. They've got three minutes 44 left on the clock. They'll then exit the stage, and then we should see Visa Lucan come out. So that explains the delay. It's going to push everything back about 20 minutes. We've had this delay. 
And that's the top of the route. We've been told that there's an interesting boulder problem up there. So we shall see. Certainly that view allows us to see just how small those blocked crimps are. And dual techs wherever you can see it shining in the light. Don't want to be standing on that. Yeah, that has really been playing a part in the in the competition, especially in the boulder competitions. We saw a lot of games with the with the no texture holds. Yeah, and there are holds. Well, what looks like holds on the roots. They uh, protect the quick draws from being so the quick draws and the bolts from being stood on. Looks like a hold. We'll point them out to you when we see them. However, they can be used as a foothold, kind of. How much it helps, we don't know. Well, let's see if we can listen in here, so we can hear the athletes. So an interesting insight into uh, what they're saying. I'm uh, not great at understanding Japanese, but uh, you can see the discussions taking place and how important, as you said, it is. I can literally only teach you one thing, Kiro, which means yellow. Thank you very much. Uh, it comes in handy on the men's route. It does indeed. Kiro and black roots. And the men's will come up after the women's. Very thuggy physical climbing for the men. Dual techs are out as well. And that route really snakes around. That's our crowd. They're literally packed in all sides on the Place de Mont Blanc. An evening is starting to set here. Those mountains will drop more into your view as the light leaves them. Nanoha Kume, uh, second World Cup ever, reading it with the experienced Mihon Nanaka. And as we pan up, the jump there coming into your vision. The white, blue, white volumes with a pinch. Technical hard climbing, kind of mantle move through that into the head wall. And then this is the boulder problem sequence. Thin side pulls moving towards the right. Bad feet throughout. And you have to cut back left for the final move. Well, a minute left on the clock now. Helen and Vita reading together. With the second observation, I'm wondering if we're almost going to see more tops. Or if, you know, compared to before, like this extra six minutes, what he gave them. Yeah, it's a really interesting point. I mean, and we've seen quite a few interesting things this, this year. We've seen the semifinals that became a final, and that changed everything. And yeah, this extra reading time. Because still, after six minutes, it's clear that they weren't done with reading the route, and they're probably still going through some, some different sequences. I reckon if you gave them an hour, they'd still be doing the same thing. Look it up. A lot of them uh, walk over, glance by as they go to the isolation area. So everyone getting another moment to uh, analyze things, the judges as well. Kids down at the front from the local climbing gyms. I wonder if when they go back to, to ISO, they'll, they'll draw out the roots. They can do. Some of them have a notebook with them. Just listening in here. I love hearing what they have to say about the route. Well, the last six minutes is done. We've had our double observation. The athletes leave fully satisfied now, I'd imagine. And that means we're a couple of minutes away from the beginning of our women's final. It will give the stadium another couple of minutes to cool down. It's been boiling hot here throughout the day. And it now, has, but we've been so lucky with the weather. Not a drop of rain. I haven't cursed a World Cup. It's happened pretty much everywhere, <laughs> but this one stayed very dry. <laughs> Clearly it was you, Terry. Kept those uh, weather gods happy. Well, let's have another look at the top eight. Vita Lucan will lead things off qualifying in last position. Mia Krampel after that. Her teammate Helen Jenicor in front of her home crowd. Miho Nanaka. Jean Kim back from retirement. Noha Kume, second World Cup. Jesse Piltz trying to make it three podiums. And Shen So close to topping that semi finals route. Let's watch, see what she can do. She'll be out last here this evening. So she'll benefit from the cooler temperatures. But more chalky holds. True. Yeah, no cleaning break during the finals. We see a cleaning break during the semi finals. 
the sheer number of athletes, 26 passing through. I'll finish off the rules now. So we talked about quick draws. We'll talk about the scoring now. So every hold is worth a point. The higher up you get, the more points you get. And there's a plus. And a plus is for using the hold you're currently on, going to the next one, moving your center of mass towards it and your hands. And that will come very important later on. But right now, we're underway. Vita Lukin gets a big cheer as she approaches the wall. After a bit of a delay, the Chamonix World Cup begins. Vita Lukin pulls off the ground, being spotted. <laughs> off the ground, easily. Not much in the way of holds that you can see on this bottom section. A little bit scary for the athletes starting off. Yeah, the root setters always seem to want to startle them maybe a little bit. And uh, so it can be quite tricky at the beginning, but I'm sure it's going to be a problem for Vita. Yeah, Vita looking strong in the semis, climbing first here in the finals. She's into the first couple of quick draws. Lots of low quick draws on this route, and we've seen a couple of athletes mess that up over the last two days, especially in qualifying. Big shoulder move out to the left for Vita. Women's route hard straight away. Yeah, the route setters mentioned that the bottom, the holes on the bottom are quite good, feel quite joggy. However, they have to move quickly because they can be as good as you want, but it's still a pumpy section. So Vita bumps her right hand, right foot on the dual text. Look at it slipping away. Makes the clip now. My eyes are just fixed on that right foot. Now she's looking for holes underneath the grey volume. Goes on top, locks off the crimp, and then gets a good toe jam in that crack-like feature. Finds an undercling. Yeah, I was a bit worried when we saw the route for that undercling. Yeah, and there's a big move coming up here. So she's got the heel in. And now she'll go up. And actually, this was the area that was... Uh, changed and it's funny that they put that in because I did think it was an enormous dead point over to the right I did wonder if that makes sense now yeah I'm glad uh, I'm glad they added it in and spotted the uh, the mistake so Vita hangs off a fairly good jug hit and she'll go to this slopey looking blocked hold Pretty easy, she one Just arms over. <laughs> oh, but that was a big Ooh. foot pop. Manages to save it, but she's struggling here. She's gonna drop back down to that jug to rest. Big hold there on the route, which is only a third of the way through. Three minutes, 28 on the clock, plenty of time, but she did not like the look of that blocked hold. No, definitely not. And I think it's quite a good and smart decision to just go back, recenter, and and think about the next moves. So Vita launches left, just committing to the sequence, trying to find the block. That's why that blocked hold is there, to make that move more tricky. And now she's coming towards probably the crux, or certainly the lower crux of this route, this jump up. Look at the heel, that's all she's trusting. Cannot get the heel up. What a fight this has been from Vita Lucan. Jumps that she left arm, that left leg. Gets the left hand. Now, this is the techie jump. Pushing Doesn't the athletes back. The clip. <laughs> yes, got the clip in. Sets herself up and she'll try to find a rest here. She'll know what this move is all about. But she knows that if she sticks the jump, she definitely has an occasion to rest afterwards. So it doesn't waste any time, yes. Has it for a second, drops down, had both hands wrapped over the top of it. And we'll get a replay of that to see. But Vita falls on the low crux. Yeah, it's quite a committing move. And the root setters did mention flexibility was going to be very important. So when she had that that heel hook up there, we could just see with the with the left leg she was struggling. So Vita breathes heavily as she unties. And she will go to the positioned armchairs over there on the right of the stage, which is quite close to our commentary box. We nearly got to see us. We're in there somewhere. And unfortunately, her, her leg, her foot got caught up. 
Yeah, and then this was the jump. Let's watch. I thought she got pretty wrapped over it. She matched the hands. And that can be a lifesaver when you do that. But also, I, I have a feeling it's better to possibly go for the double on it. A bit more friction on. So, Vita is done. Mia Krampel up next. So, Mia Krampel out onto the stage. She has such a confidence about her when she enters a final. It's great to see. She just owns that stage when she walks onto it. I think it's the moment she just relishes when all the qualifying semi-final stuff is out of the way and she can just climb her hardest. Not she, wearing the double shoe combo that she does at She had a, a double shoe combo? Which shoes did she have on? I think it was a Drago and a something else, I can't remember. And a Chimera, possibly? Oh, she did, have, I think, have them on in, uh, in semi-finals. So, matching shoes this time. Matching with her, with her uniform. But I gotta say, she's one of those athletes that is a real fighter. I'd describe her like that since I will forever remember that moment in, uh, in Munich in 2019 where she was like hopping around because of a knee injury and still pushed through, climbed, climbed her way onto the podium. Yeah, she's a real fighter. Brings the right foot over. Yeah, Mia Krampel will not let go until every part of her is left behind on the wall, up to a crimp. And we can see the graphic on the left now, that shows our current leader, Vita Lucan. And this is the scary part for me, that dual text on the left. 29 plus was Vita's score. Mia using the dual text, trying to get as much rubber on that as possible. I mean, like that, it works. <laughs> Swings around to a high left heel. She's good at resting in these positions. Spots the left hand. And the heel, she's a bit awkward here on the rope. She'll have to flick that underneath the volume and her leg. She's on a good job, get a big smile on her face. I think she realizes quite how important that hold might have been. And a good rest for the women, third of the way up. She recently mentioned in an interview that the Slovenian team, team is probably so good because they focus on the quality of their training and not the quantity. That's where I've been going wrong. <laughs> Clearly. Just volume. Just volume. I do hours. Doesn't get anywhere. Vita out to the crimp on the left. We'll find the heel and rock up. Should be okay to get stood for the jump. But we saw Vita drop it. She definitely found a better rest there. I'm really trusting that the toe, the heel hook. Finds the undercling. This is where Vita shook for a while before making the commit, so committing to the jump. Has the left heel in. And goes for it. Yes, and sticks it. Sticks the jump. Right. And as you said earlier, she'll now have a pretty good opportunity to rest. That is Slovenian coaches looking upwards. A happy coach. Happy coaches indeed. <laughs> She's looking down on the clock, but she has more than half the time to, to get to the top, so I'm sure she's going to milk this rest. Yeah, it's pretty good when you get over it, but you've got to go all the way behind that pinch. It's a big jump. Determination. Now, this is a full body Ooh. move, this press. And there's not that much to grab there with the right hand. It's just a thumb, pinchy, small hold. It's that feeling when you can feel your side, you know, when you're mantling up, where everything is starting to contract. It's one of those moves. I'm sure she's not skipping out on, on abs and core day. <laughs> oh, she tried that thumb again, didn't like it. It's almost horizontal on the wall now. Head pretty much facing back towards the crowd. She needs to press all the way up, 90 degrees through. Drops this, back down. It just looks so uncomfortable. Well, this might be a move where some of, and you were mentioning heights, where some of the shorter climbers might actually find this easier to fit into that position. Yeah, so the women range from 153, Jane Kim, but Mia Krampel is on the 
taller side at 163. So she might struggle to fit into the space, but changed her beater well thought through by Mia Krample. Left thumb underneath. <laughs> what do you call it? She needs to unwind from the situation. What do you call it, Terry? What's this move? Is it a thumb to cling or a thumb scrag? You're the defining uh, vote. Oh boy, uh, it's a tummy thumb. A tummy thumb. <laughs> oh. oh, a slip from Mia Krample. She tries to bring the right toe up, slides down, and she is done. That was always has the potential to happen, that move, when you're putting so much pressure through your feet. Well, that's what is meant to keep you on, but it's, the wall is so overhanging up there. It just repushes, it repushed her out. Right, so a long fight for Mia Kramper. We said she wouldn't fall until she left nothing behind. Mia takes a breath as she undoes the knot, and she will join Vita Lukad on the sidelines. Two athletes done. Helen Jenikor up next. That was the jump. Got it much better than Vita. Two hands. Held the jump well, kicked the right foot out, and then the press up. This was where she slipped, luckily falling between the volumes. Yeah, I'm always worried with those moves. Yeah, oh, the walls, quick draws, swing in the breeze as we wait our next athlete. And the next athlete out is Helene Jenico from France. Probably a town favorite. I think they might be behind her here. And we can see as the camera rotates how much they're enjoying watching her. But Helene will stay in her zone. She's a sunglasses on, headphones on, kind of an ISO person. And really likes to stay within that zone. The smile will come out after. But right now, it's all about this moment for Helene. Yeah, we saw her in Innsbruck, unfortunately, fall a bit early on the route. But hopefully here she'll get past this first streaky moves. Yeah, I think the bottom seems to be pretty steady so far out of the two we've seen. Maybe a bit of one of those you've got to think about, make sure of the beater rather than being technically difficult. And that thumb pressing on the dual text, that's the kind of thing. There is a, uh, a jib for the thumb if she wants to use it. She doesn't need to. <laughs> might, might be a foothold, <laughs> Or that might actually, come in yeah. handy as a foothold, yeah. And she's no stranger to the podiums. I mean, here in uh, here in Chamonix, 13 years ago, she got a silver medal. So it was a while ago, but she looks in great shape. The fire to be back on the podium will certainly be there for Helene. She nails the shoulder move. Casual so far. And you mentioned she was a root setter. That probably gives her, her an advantage in, in root reading. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I asked her about it. She said, well, look, not really, because Ooh. a lot of the athletes by that point know. We see it from another camera angle, but there's a knee bar in there that she found with her right, uh, with her right leg. Helen with a super high left. Yeah, it must help because you're in that zone of thinking about how you would set a route. Or the little tricks that, that root setters like to play on athletes. She's like, okay, it's more than a beta break. It's a mind break. Absolutely, yeah. But again, maybe there's that possibility of overthinking something, you know, thinking the root setters are trying to trick you when they're not. Who knows? We're making stuff up in Helen's <laughs> brain here. Let's just go straight out the climbing. She's got her heel in, gets the side pull, and one move away from the jug. Yeah, this fold turned out to be quite necessary. So it's Helene holding off on the jug. Resting. Ooh, and a nice furry chalk bag. Yeah, very job. She always has a different one on. So that's the hold the setters put back on. Shakes out on it. Compared to Mia, she is moving slightly slower. At this point, Mia was already through the um, through the jump. Yeah, she was through that. And I think Helen's going to take a moment to make sure of this move. Helene sets herself for this tricky mantle move up and then into the jump. Trust that heel. 
clips and rocks up all at the same time. She'll want to find a resting position using her knees, shins, whatever it takes. Just crunches up there. Now, Helene is looking a bit pumped here. She goes straight for the jump without the rest and holds the pinch. She banked on herself getting that, didn't pause like the others did. That was great to watch. Just read the sequence, knew she had to execute, didn't doubt it, and just went for it. Yeah, a good decision from Helene, and this will allow her to recover. She'll stretch out two and a half minutes to go. She wants the crowd behind her. That's a, a tired gesture out towards them. But look at that position on our camera. You can see how really overhanging it is and just what it must feel like to be hanging there in front of that crowd. So she has two minutes, more than two minutes on the clock. However, we know that probably the next couple of moves will take a while or are, quite, are indeed quite tricky. And she's on the taller side of the climbers. She and Jess Jessica Pills are both 165. Oh, she uses a knee to get established, brings the left hand up under the undercling, stood up now, head hitting the quick draw. She'll want to clip it from here, but needs to snatch at it. Now she can breathe as she gets the side pull in, twists the left knee down. It's a good position, this, if she can find a shake, but that left hand, the fingernails will be digging into her skin. 67 World Cup appearances, one win for Helene Genicourt, and she's approaching the head wall. Bumps the left hand up the sloper. Out towards the side pull now, but this is where she still needs to think about it, and a minute 13 starts to become relevant here. Big move needed. Left, right, grab, elevator door style. That's the potential on that move. And Helene, for the time being, will move into the top spot with three athletes gone. That was an excellent performance for her. I'm sure she can be happy with that. Yeah, strong stuff from Helene. She unties and for the time being will be in the number one spot. But Miho Nanaka, Jean Kim, Nanoha Kume, Jessica Piltz and Sean So still to come. If you're just joining us, we're in Chamonix. The start of the competition slightly delayed. We're back in action now. My name is Matt Groom, joined by Teresa Corti and Terry. We said the crowd would enjoy it and they certainly seem to be. Yes, indeed. I mean, the route setters did put up a pretty cool route. That jump is certainly big and the, route, the moves that follow aren't that obvious. Uh, so yeah, we are all treated to a show. And we're just at the beginning. <laughs> We are just at the beginning. That was Helen's big decision not to rest, to go for the jump, paid off. She managed to get something back in that horizontal position. Next athlete out, Miho Nanaka will join us onto the stage, which will mark the halfway point in this women's final here in Chamonix. So Miho Nanaka ignores the cheers of the crowd. She focuses on the wall, backlit by the lights. Crowded media area here. The cameraman jostling for position all around. Helene in front of us here, high-fiving her coaches. She's pleased with that performance. All right, let's ramp up the tension here. Fourth athlete out, Miho Nanaka. Slow and steady, we know at the bottom. Nothing too hard for them. And she took her time to re read the route. Miho with the right foot on a smear. Locks off the left hand. Cruising through this first part of the route. Yeah, she's such a powerful climber. I mean, big, cool moves, big, cool bouldering moves. She has no problems with those. Yeah, heavily featured on the boulder circuit. Won a World Cup this year in South Korea. Her first bouldering gold in five years. She's back on a rope and looking strong. Japanese team there watching on, and they'll be nervous at this point. Nothing they could do to help. High toe hook from Miho as she rocks over. Get a 
gets that toe jam in the crack, drags the foot across. Miho in the rest now. One move away from a pretty good hold, that very chalked up sideways hold you can see above her head. Up high, slightly awkward crip with that long draw, but important to stop rope drag. Miho breathes in the thin Chamonix air. She eyes up the next blocked hold. Feet start to run out here. Indeed, but it won't be an issue for her. She's so strong on those like campusy moves. And it's a first the uh, it's a first finals here in Chamonix actually, and a first finals this year as well. We saw her in Innsbruck in the semis, but didn't quite didn't quite make it through to the finals. Good to see Miho back. You can just see the green hair that she recently had there. Poke it out on the left. She had gold hair for her gold medal. Tense moments. Miho commits, flicks her leg underneath the rope. We just need to manage that rope through this section, which she does well. Not in the way. Comes into an undercling and an undercling above her head. Here we go. Time to fly for Miho Nanaka. She eyes it up. No rest needed. Sets, jumps, holds it, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Not an issue. <laughs> A very Miho like move that. And she does well. We'll make the clip underneath herself and we'll take a moment to breathe and shake out. Both inter it's interesting that both Mio and Elen used a knee push, I'm going to say, on that uh, on that white eggy hold. Just, I guess, if you're not that flexible or stretchy, maybe you can, like, yeah, push in in another way. Yeah, good work from Miho, reading that sequence well. Now rocks up on that right foot. We know that right foot can pop unless you put the correct weight through it. Into the thumbs. Shaking as she gets stood upwards. Really pushing her hips towards the wall. All right, Miho about to enter the head wall. And we know Helene did this move in an elevated door style way, jumping into it. It'll be interesting to see if that's because she was pumped or if that's the method. Miho hits the side pull well. Swaps her feet. Goes with a left cross rather than the jump. She falls. And it'll be interesting to see where the judges do that because it should be similar to Helene's score. But if it is, well, we can see 36 at the moment. Helene Jenny on 37 plus. So bringing that right hand was important. Yeah, jumping up with two hands. Yeah, that was definitely extra, extra, well, one move and a half. Yeah, so that might play an important role. We'll see. Miho, hands on the hips, looks upwards. Four athletes done, four to go. Not totally pleased with that performance. <laughs> she right. still hasn't made a podium in lead, which I'm going to say is surprising. <laughs> Very, yes. <laughs> I know, so she also got 37 plus like, uh, like Elen Yaniko. So at the moment, she's in first. OK, so the score being updated, that does sometimes happen. So. Same score as Helene, and if she has got the same score, that means she will move into the lead due to count back to the semi-finals, qualified in a higher position. And that was the heel, not really on it. This was Miho getting set for the jump, but never really in doubt. Super confident there. She just used the wall to stop the swing. Got the draw in, and then after that, the boulder problem crossed through. Left hand firing off. That was it, and a bit of a dry fire with the left hand, maybe not quite high enough with the feet as she felt. Kicks against the wall, and Miho Nanaka is done for this evening. So a little bit of a pause in proceedings now as we wait for the second half of the women's field. So Terry, no surprises, I don't think, so far on that route. Climbing pretty straightforward, but that jump can cause problems that we saw from Vita. 
Yeah, indeed. And uh, it's one of those moves, it goes or it doesn't. <laughs> Yes, exactly. But committing towards it is pretty important since also afterwards you do get a pretty good rest. Yeah, the, it's interesting the athletes who rested there and those who didn't. And whether that decision was made out of pump or out of a decision. And whether people saw that horizontal rest or not. Because it's hard to tell from the ground just how big good that would be. Well, let's have a look at our four athletes so far. Vita Lucan started off first after a bit of a delay, had a foot pop down low, she managed to save. <laughs> I didn't see that expression before. Big jump, but she couldn't hold the swing. Fell at the furthest point of that swing for Vita. She came down. Meanwhile, her teammate Mia Krampel made the leap. Got the move in. It was the moves after that that caused some problems. The right foot slipping as she pressed against it falling through that chimney-like feature. And then home crowd favorite, Helene Jenicourt, held the top spot for a while. That was the heel hook on the jug down low. She got the jump after deciding to go through the move without a rest. Strong stuff. That was a slap over to the right. And that was Miho's heel, which wasn't quite in. She nailed the jump. Just watched her climb. That foot kicking off the wall to stop the swing. Left hand through, firing off. And that was Miho's story, but that leaves her in the number one position. Zhang Kim out next. Well, welcome to one of the most incredible views in climbing, the Chamonix lead wall, that audience, and the mountains that are now dropping into golden light as the sun sets. I often think the, the backdrop sometimes looks like CGI or a very good green screen. It does sometimes look fake, doesn't it? Especially on photos that we see. Yeah, it's just like the, the photographers had a lot of fun with Photoshop. Yes. <laughs> but they are real. There they are. It's proof of them. Retreated a little in recent years. Climate change taking its toll on Germany as much as anywhere. Hot, hot summer's here, but it's cool now in the evening. And Jane Kim is back. Acknowledges the crowd, turns to face the wall. Hundred and fifty-eight World Cups in total. Ninety-six lead World Cups appearances. Twenty-nine wins. And one here as well in Chamonix. That's such a CV. Actually, too sorry. <laughs> she won here in 2011. She's won so much. <laughs> we we all lose track, let's be honest. Sorry, we cannot keep up. Keep I doubt up. she remembers. I mean, it's a lot of victories. <laughs> all right, she's underway. The crowd going actually very silent as she started cr climbing. She commands that kind of respect when she's on the wall. But she will not be moving that quickly through the roots. Takes her time. Sure of every handhold, every foothold before she commits to it. Yeah, she's just a, such a good controlled climber. She doesn't really risk anything because I think it comes from a root reading perspective. Like she is sure of of the sequences. It's not that she has an issue committing or not to the moves. She just reads it well and executes. Yeah, it's not like she's being slow. It's just a style of climbing. But we have occasionally seen her push that six minute limit. So we'll have to wait and see. She nears the top of the route. Takes a moment to rest down low. I think I said that was a no text hold on the left foot, but there is actually a circle of texture on it. You can see now from that angle. But less scary than I thought. Yeah, she does prefer to do more static moves instead of big dynamics moves. So I'm wondering how she will uh, try to do the jump, whether she will actually go for it or try and static it. Yeah, I mean, if she manages that, it will be incredible if she pushes, pulls through that. It is a big jump, so yes, it might cause her problems. You are right later on. But that is to come right now. She's just got to keep things together through this traverse over to the left. Getting huge support from Team Korea. You can hear them. Yeah. 
Jane has a right heel high up on the hole, now releases it to go to the side ball. Look at that poetry as she brings that arm over. Up to the jargon has been another moment for her to rest. I love that everybody's so in awe in when she's climbing. And we do call her a legend, but for good reasons, because she's been so consistent over the years. I mean, she made her debut here in 2004. And uh, yeah, won twice here in Chamonix and stood in the podium for a total of six times. Unreal, isn't it, those stats? Right, she's got the right foot in. She'll begin this mantle process, and she's already halfway through her time, but she's approaching the halfway point. High heel in, shakes out that right hand, makes the clip. And this is gonna be Jen's moment here. Uses the knees to get stood up. Into the undercling now. Will she shake out? Flicks the hand over the quick draw, eyes the jump. Here we go. And she sticks it with ease. <laughs> yes. Well, if you've been dreaming about a potential Jen Kim podium. Oh, no, don't jinx it yet. You're going to be excited. She kicks the quick draw to get it swinging. It's all right, Terry, I can curse it. No. <laughs> Terry looking nervously up at the wall next to me here as we watched Jane super relaxed in that position. It's a fairly common route setting trick, this one. The athletes will have seen it before, they know. And look at that down below, the athletes looking up. Jane climbs. But this is a powerful move. High feet, start the press, get your weight over on your feet. Shoulders stretching out behind her, she shakes out into the thumbs. Brings the left foot up. This position, more awkward than it might look, being pushed backwards by the overhang all the time. Yeah, and she's really pressing her hips against the wall to try and stay on. Out to the block side pull. Matching with the feet, that's all she's got for the left hand. One minute 12 to work out this final boulder problem. Could have timed this to perfection, you know. But this next sequence is hard, and now for She's the first time. those feet. Well, a, well, if in doubt, swing for Jen. 52 seconds. This is the move Miho fell on. It's solid from Jen Kim. Watch the scoreboard. 37 at the moment, that will definitely be yes. upgraded out. She's Come in on. the top spot. And rests, 38 seconds to go. This is a real marker for anyone watching. Every hold the crowd responds to. Yeah, everybody, let's take notes. <laughs> She's got to clip that draw though. It's now down and to her left. She doesn't want to go too far towards the right. Needs to get that draw in 16 seconds. She wants now to go for the top, but she's missed the bottom hold. She's pumped, she's gone. Takes an enormous swing. Oh yes, her heart beats there. That was a big one. I'm missing that draw. Ooh. Yeah, the root setter did mention that it's outright and then they have to cross over left. So maybe there was also an occasion to clip afterwards or even when the jaw would have been on her, on her knees. Wonderful, wonderful scenes oh, there. Oh, she's so happy. I'm so happy for her. Well, that could be, you never know, our gold medal. Three to go. It certainly put her in a good spot for a potential podium finish here. And she just enjoys this moment. Hard not to have a smile on your face as you watch that. Let's see it again. She got the jump so well. Both hands wrapped over. Swinging, kicking. Full commitment. She mentioned that she wanted to make her daughter proud and to see her, well, on TV climbing at her best, and she's definitely doing that. She is indeed. That was the enormous swing. That was a real one where your stomach comes up into your throat as she fell there. Right, next athlete up, 
Jessica Pilt, so Nanoha Kume on the mats. So second Japanese athlete, second World Cup ever. Just 19, and what a moment for her as she comes out onto the stage. Just going through the moves again. <laughs> There's like a beat to her hand. It's a very movement, easy bite. It's a very there. easy climb, this one. Tuck, 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 tuck. Same thing, left, right, left, right. <laughs> She's a good beat going on. I, I think, to be fair, she is drying liquid chalk more than reading the moves. <laughs> She would have put the liquid chalk on just before she came out. Needs to make sure it's dry. And as she puts that extra layer of the powdered chalk on, rituals complete. She is ready to go. Three to go then. And we start, we will start after this to understand how the podium is going to pan out. Another climber that's climbing in socks. I am always quite amazed. <laughs> socks on. I don't know how Kume, will it make a difference? You do see a lot of people, and I talked to them about it in Jakarta, and they were saying how it helps with sweat. So if it's a really hot place, and you have like that layer of sweat between your foot and the shoe, they don't, some people don't like that feeling, that slip, so they put the socks on to soak some of it up. But not that hot here in Chamonix, but maybe just habit at this stage. Gets the right toe in. And she's no stranger to winning in 2022 and 2021. She won the Lee Junior Climbing Youth World Championships. Yeah, she's been very good in that youth scene. And, but we sometimes see athletes struggle with the transition into the senior circuit. No such problems for her. Already in a final. It's also way more demanding, isn't it? Yeah, especially a season like this when there's so many World Cups. I think maybe taking that decision not to do them all and some of that will have been a selector decision from the Japanese selectors. They're just trying to work their team out at the moment. I also think a good lead climber, you don't want to tire them out too much during the boulder season. Yeah, especially when you're unsure of an athlete. You sometimes have to sort of feel out different people, different situations. How do they cope with travel? I'm right. sure well, because here in Chamonix, they've got good pastries. <laughs> All important for curing jet lag, that one. <laughs> Pound of chocolate, <laughs> gone next day. I promise you. There are even bakeries that make them vegan. <laughs> is it pan of chocolate? Oh, well, you don't vegan, want, like, as buttery things. I do. But you <laughs> <laughs> Brings the right foot over the road. <laughs> so she's, she's got the awkward quick draw in. Gives it a bit of a shake to make sure it's clipped. It felt like a double shake. <laughs> it's a double shake. Shaking yeah. the arm and on a quick draw. So, Nano Hakume. Starts to go left. Gets the heel in. Rope around the right way. She won't have to worry too much. Turns it into a slight toe hook. Out towards the left. Gets the blocked foot in nicely. Okay, this is the move where people have been getting knees involved. Anything really. In fact, the heel looks like one of the hardest ways to do this. Just straight up rocking on it. It's almost like it's awkward to bring that left foot um, yeah, up and over. All right, she gets set for the jump. The crowd get behind her. Here she goes. The leap just. You watch her feet kick way out then. Hands holding on. Looks down on the clock. She has enough time. Just fighting a bit there to pull the rope through. Jane Kim method of um, <laughs> kicking the quick draw. It's a good method, just gets it swinging so you can reach it easier. You see the athletes sometimes lay that quick draw over their legs to get it in the right position. Head down towards the crowd, just shakes out that right arm. Minute 57 on the clock. 
She'll know there's no top so far. She would probably have heard that. So she's likely to understand due to the time the athletes took that they're getting into the head wall. She knows the next sequence might be tricky. And immediately finds out that it is. Presses down with the left arm. Gaining some distance, some height away from the wall. Right foot on the smear. Bit of a shake out before she gets the side put and then she'll look above her head to bring that left hand over. From a bad hold to a big hold, still not wonderful. She doesn't seem too faced yet. She doesn't seem too tired. So there's athletes where you don't know she's gonna fall until she kind of falls. <laughs> Up with the right hand. We get the opposite of that as well. Athletes who always look like they're about to fall and hold on. Just not sure what to do with the left foot. But tries the double. Couldn't make it work. Looks like that's going to be a 37 plus as well. Yeah, someone asked me the other day what the point of a semi-finals was. Well, separation is one of the reasons just to make sure that we can get winners and more climbing, come on, like, who doesn't love more climbing? It's true. It's been a packed couple of days. We had the speed first of all, then the semi-finals this morning, and then the finals now. And Noha Kume is done, she's finished. Says goodbye. Two athletes to go. We can start to work out that she's guaranteed a medal, if that's yes, the high point. Yes, indeed, yeah. We wait for her score to be confirmed before saying that, but should be in with two to go. Jesse Piltz. No, with two to go, she's so. not because um, Jane Kim is above her. True, good point. So, not guaranteed. I'll let you. <laughs> All right, next athlete out will be Jesse Piltz as the crowd reacts. So, here we go. The spotlight will go slowly towards. The curtains, there they are, picks them out. Cameramen are ready, sound men are ready. The belayers are prepped. Here we go, final two, Jessie Piltz. If she can win here, it'll be an amazing bronze, silver and gold triple for her. Three, two, one. But then has to ride on that one. She's won twice before in her career. Here in Chamonix. No, overall. All right, here we go. Underway on the first half of the route. She's been competing here in Chamonix since 2013, which is uh, 10 years ago now. All right, through the slopers. Gets the left hand in. Slow and steady for Jessie, although she really had to watch that right toe. Up to the shoulder remove, holds it well. So Jesse has the right hand under. We saw, I think it was Helene get some kind of a knee bar under there. No one else doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're the same height, so. Oh, that's a bit too late. Yeah, it was more of a knee scrub, wasn't it? Just a moment to, to help the next move. This is the scary move with the right foot. <laughs> Good work from Jessie. She gets the crimp with the left hand. Toes jammed in that crack. But preferred to go back down. Jessie is having a bit of rope troubles here. She tangled up. Yes. Just slightly. She's going to want to get that leg over. The, oh no, the rope now falls the right side. She's good. All right, well, Jessie sorts out the rope issue. Straight into this left hand. 
And interestingly, she's moved through the good rest pretty quickly. Jessie swings up towards the crimp. Good climbing from her at the moment. A little nervy down the bottom, but she seems to have settled into this now. She gets the heel. That heel is so interesting. It's not really on the blue jib at all, more above it, and then she brings the top of the heel down to rest on it. Right foot in. She's got the right hand underneath. We'll look to bump the left up, and then she can shake. Definitely struggling with that foothold. All right, now she's ready for the jump. Eyes it up, sets herself. Jesse leaps, gets it. And she will now get this rest about the same time as everyone else. Three minutes on the Three clock. Minutes. Yeah, it's a third of, a way of the way up this jump, but a good separation for the for the head wall. Is in just enough time to get pumped. One co one big committing move, and then here a good rest. And she knows she has a couple of really pumpy moves to go. <laughs> yeah, she's got a very hard boulder problem to come that we haven't seen anyone unlock the sequence of. But this move first, this press. Right thumb underneath, left foot up. She'll try to twist that around, but it's awkward for her. She goes back to rest again. Sitting in sixth currently, 32. So it pushes out of a swimming pool. Yeah, different. She's really having to commit to that. You have to twist your head to work it out. She hasn't fallen, but she's dropped back down to the jug again. So Jesse not finding the method at the moment. Gets a kick from the crowd though. And look at that now, the mountains. Splendid in the background. Comes up with the right thumb underneath. Trying to find a foot up high, there's nothing really. She wants to bring that left foot in. Yeah, she really needs to move her center towards the right to make this move work. Yeah, she is fighting for this, but it's taking its toll. She's had to reset so many times. Remember, she's still hanging off a lead wall. It's not like she's sitting on the ground in this moment. You can recover only so much, though. I mean, fortunately, she has endurance for days. And she trains in Innsbruck, so there's not <laughs> a lack of lead routes and really bumpy ones and longer ones in here. Yeah, she'll have the endurance for it, but how many times can you keep trying this? Left foot this time with a heel. Looks a bit more comfortable, gains some height. But now she's got to bring the right foot over rather than the left. But this is where you've got to trust it and wait it, and it's only just on. Now she upgrades it to a better position. She's on the side pull. 35 seconds, though, she's going to have to motor. Interesting, so that move is possible both ways, right and left. Yeah, good setting. Right, here we go, 26 seconds. She's approaching the podium now. In fifth, though, a couple of moves will make a big difference. Statically reaches hands through, gets it, and then falls. Had it vertically for a second, try to flip it into a side pull. Just outside of the podium, fifth place for Jesse. Sadly, the 3 2 1 dream. <laughs> we called it, that was the problem. That was the problem, cursed by us. I'm sorry. Uh, Great work from Jesse Piltz. And darkness now is really coming upon us. We're coming up to 9.45 here in Chamonix. A bit delayed at the beginning of proceedings. Nearing the end of the women's comp now, one climber to go. We're watching a replay here of Jesse's big jump out. That flick off the wall, most people doing that. It was this move that caused us some issues. Yeah, the hip flexibility on that move was pretty impressive. Yeah, very impressive from Jesse. Took the swing back down. Okay, final athlete out, Shan So from Korea, the last who can make an impact on the podium here tonight. So here we go, last climber out onto the stage. 
still only 19. It's very easy to forget. Seems to have matured this year, become a leader within the Korean team. I gotta say, she's already a household name though. Yeah, massive start in Korea. All right, for the last time, we get to see the women's roots. Athlete and number eight. Who knows, maybe even a top. I hope so. It's so nice to have the last climber out, top the route. But also for us as the audience to see those last moves, how, how they go down. I always feel like I've got unfinished business when I don't see a climber finish things off, especially when it's an exciting top. But we want separation. I've got it. But 38 plus really proving the hard point. I think they readjusted the, um, the numbers because it was 37 plus at a certain point. Yes, it was. <laughs> I, I guess it's, it's with the updated hold at the bottom, missing hold. <laughs> yeah, it's potentially that. It does say 43 plus on the scoreboard. You are right. It did definitely say something different earlier on. But there we go. Whatever. Jane is in the lead. We know that. Points matter. Well, that, yeah. Jane did get a lot higher than the 37, though, so that might be why. Anyway, whatever. I got two caught up in the climbing. We know the scores they have to get to. Graphic on the left. Shianso has a lot of climbing still to go here. Well, we know for sure that uh, Jane is on the podium. Is it silver or gold? Well, as is Nanoha Kume in her second World Cup. She's yeah. going to podium as well. Oh, she's having a bit of difficulties with this clip. Yeah, sometimes when they're so out from the wall, um, it can be it can be quite tricky. Yeah, it's just more flexible. It moves around more than a normal quick draw. Yeah. Hard yeah. to get. Okay, up with the left hand. This is good from Chan So. The rope work as well. She does also occasionally climb outdoors uh, off-season. <laughs> and we just have to mention that this winter uh, she climbed La Rambla down in Spain, which is a 9A+. Plus. So quite harder than this route. And she keeps looking. Sorry, I'm just... Oh. Now, what has happened here? I think she's forgotten a draw again. Surely not. I'm looking at the wall now. I can't see. But it's definitely... A quick where? draw. I'm trying to see where it is. She had a look down at the judges for a while, kept on climbing. I'm trying to see where, if it is a misdraw, what she did, but she certainly got someone to tell her. What? Well, we're trying to get some confirmation. In fact, there Terry, why don't you go and find out if you can, if you know what the issue is. And we'll stick with us as we try to find out. I can't see if there is a quick draw or what it was. But Terry has gone to find out. Chen So, though, will go. We'll wait for confirmation of exactly where her score is in a second. Terry has gone to find out from the judges what happened exactly with that. It was hard for us to see it on the stage, but we know she was called down. And therefore, our podium is fixed. We'll wait for these updated scores because there might be an appeal here as well. Let's see a replay of this. So I've been told that there's a replay coming, which might be the incident that brought her down. Let's see. Here we go on screen. So she's in this position, and it might be that right quick draw if they're showing us this as a replay. So let's have a look if she misses this. I think she does. Yeah, look, she's reaching up. It is that quick draw. She was distracted by the long one. And there we go. That was a clip. You can't clip them out of order. You must clip them in the order that they're on the wall. That was the mistake. And look, that was the moment she realized. But then. Is it not in there? So maybe the rope clipped itself. That's what the confusion was, well, which I've never seen in destiny. a competition. I've never <laughs> seen that happen. 
That's honestly that's completely unique. Obviously, she is devastated. Devastated by that. So she didn't clip the draw. Then, because of the angle of the rope, the rope must have clipped itself into the quick draw. That is something I have never seen happen in a climbing competition. But whatever it was, originally had a technical error from her. So that's the story. Like we mentioned in the semi-final round, maybe it's time to point to the quick draws or have them in bright red. It's happened a lot here in Chamonix. Well, here's confirmation of the score. So Jane Kim wins here in Chamonix, 43 plus. Nanoha Kume, her second World Cup, first podium, and Helene Janiko. Well, the French crowd will love that. Who knows what could have happened to Shane So We will never know. But regardless, she gets counted out at 22. Oh. All right, well, I think we're just waiting for perhaps some peels to go in. Or I'm not sure quite what's going on, but the scores are being confirmed. And the athletes are on stage, they're all comforting Shen So, who is still obviously upset up there. But the crowd now starting to react as our winners are announced. Helene Jenicour, bronze medal for her, out on the stage. What a moment in front of the crowd. Oh, she must be so pleased. Running over, Nano Hakume joins her. Silver medal for her, she can't believe it either. <laughs> oh, she's just realized she's got the silver. There we go. <laughs> I can't believe it. What is going on in this competition? Jane Kim comes on. Oh, I'm just checking the scores as well. No, Hakumi was so confused then. She got me confused. She's got the silver. <laughs> That's excellent news though. Yes, yeah, all confirmed. Jane Kim, wow, what a return for her. 12 years since her last gold here in Chamonix. Well, it is a pretty spectacular competition. We have technical incidences, quick draw moments, and finally we have our winner, and she is a legend. What a moment. So, Terry, we'll say goodbye to you as you go to interview Jane uh, behind the stage. Good luck with that, and I'll see Any you in a couple of minutes. Any burning questions you've got? <laughs> um, just how? I would just congratulate her <laughs> yes. and uh, wonder if her daughter's watching. That's what I'd ask. <laughs> see you right, in a bit, Terry. See you later. All right, so we pause here before the men's competition. What drama, eh? Started with a technical incident on the women's routes. The hold was missing. That was replaced. We then had our finals drama with quick draws and the rest. And finally, Jane Kim takes the victory. And what a moment for her on her return. That's a, a bat flickering across the camera there. Quite a few bats flying around overhead. Darkness almost fully here in Chamonix. The lights starting to spring up all over the square. And again, this festival party style atmosphere is going on. So let's see some of the highlights from early on. Jane Kim, your winner here tonight, flying through the air. She latched the jug, two hands on that. That's another angle of it, full commitment from her. We wondered if she struggled with it, she didn't at all. And this was the top, held that move, upgraded the foot and took the big swing all the way back down. Well, let's go and see that lady there who's backstage with Teresa. Congratulations, that was such a cool final to see. Thank How does you. it feel being on the top spot again? Yes, uh, it's kind of unbelievable and uh, so happy, but now just more sorry for Cheyenne because, yeah, it's amazing that I won the Chamonix World Cup, but I think not, not like this. And, um, it's 
bitter and sweet, yes. And I don't know what, what can I say, but uh, I just happy to join in final this amazing Shamuni. And I really happy did my best. And for the Cheyan, um, I think it happened. It, it can be happen always. So uh, maybe next time we will do our best at the end. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. It was so cool <laughs> to see that. I hope your daughter is watching. Yes. Uh, maybe she's sleeping now, but <laughs> I, I want to say uh, to her, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jen. Congratulations on your win. What a moment. And I'm sure your daughter is watching. Well, it might be past her bedtime. Okay, women's comp has finished. We have our winner. I think the podiums will come after the event. And right now we'll focus on the men. We change sides on the wall. And let's have a look at the men's starting list, shall we? Leading the way will be Luka Potocha from Slovenia, qualifying in last place. He'll climb first. Sam Avazu, hometown favorite after that. Dohyan Lee from Korea. Alex Magos, he's back in the finals. Good to see him. Stefan Schretz, good performance. Nice to see him climbing at the highest level. Colin Duffy. Returns a form for him after a finals last week in Vilas. Serato Anraku. See if that 16-year-old can make an impression on the podium. And finally, Toby Roberts, who is quickly becoming one of the best all-round male athletes on the circuit. Still young. He's got medals. Can he win more here in Chamonix? We'll have to see. And Terry, you've joined me back at the commentary box. So what were your impressions of Jane then? Apart from the interview, how was she backstage? I shamelessly took a selfie. First <laughs> of course, of all. she did. <laughs> uh, she was uh, she was so happy. I mean, obviously, uh, a, a gold here in Chamonix after all these years. Um, yeah, yeah, she's definitely happy. And I don't know what she said in Korean to her daughter, but I'm sure it was something cute and sweet. And uh, yeah, she was so gutted for Shion, which. I mean, you can tell a lot from that. She really cares about her teammate, and I'm sure they've spent so many hours training and climbing together. It, the sport, it's literally blood, sweat, and tears. So it was, it was a bit of a shame, and she did admit like winning like that, it's not really fair fair. Yeah, it's not how she would have wanted to have done it. Yeah. What a return for her. Luca Potteja announced to the audience, I love that shot, the men's silhouettes on the wall there, very dramatic. Sam Avazu is next. Yeah, just puts his hands up. That's all you really need. The crowd will be right behind him. And Alex Magos looking chill. Everyone else has got a jumper on. Alex is hanging around, arms out. Oh, sorry, not Alex next. Dokian Lee next. Stefan Schretz. He's warming up his uh, his wrists. He That's is. Now he's getting Alex ready. Sir. There is Alex Magos. Looking chill. Yeah, looking chill. I wonder if they look back at these videos and go like, "Hi, it's me." <laughs> <laughs> there is Stefan. His best result so far has been fourth. He's the tallest climber out of this bunch. You can kind of see it. No, you can definitely see it. Yeah, certainly taller than Alex next to him. Colin Duffy, what a finals he had last week in Vila. Gave him a bit of confidence. He climbed well in the semi-finals, high up on the wall. Be interesting to see if he can keep it together. Saratu and Raku on the left of Colin. <laughs> Very popular member of the circuit. And finally, Toby Roberts from Great Britain. He will close things out for us here in Chamonix. There he is. 
We all remember that boulder problem from Brixen. Yeah, the graphic flashed up with zero golds, but that's a lead. But he does have a gold in boulder. He does indeed. So Toby Roberts will climb last of all. MC gets the crowd ready. We're ready here in the commentary box. I hope you are back at home. It's time for the men's final. You can just see, uh, and we're going to watch a, uh, an observation period from earlier on as daylight springs onto our screen. Alex reading it with Stefan. I don't think we've got audio for this segment, otherwise I'd be quiet. We listened earlier, they were speaking in German as well. Yeah. That's German, <laughs> last time I checked. <laughs> Matt looked at me very dubious eyes. There's a yar out of nowhere there. <laughs> Terry looks up from my phone, gives a yar. <laughs> Colin Duffy, reading it with Luca. And that is the route. Pretty physical down low. Big move on bad feet through this sequence here, those dishes. Not as good as they look, not exactly sinker jugs. And the route goes all the way back from left to right. So that's what the men have in front of them. This was from earlier on when we started the broadcast. This was Alex having a look at the starter moves. I just to say, the guy holding that Canadian flag on the bottom right has taken that to every World Cup. You know him. He introduced himself. So, Bob, if you're listening, love your flag. Well, we just missed a bit of a light show there. The MC was trying to get everyone's camera phones up. Yeah, we're missing the star lights, but uh, the MC just decided on, on this light show. Last night there was a similar one. It was exactly the same, yeah. So if you want to see it on camera, then go and watch the speed broadcast. So Luca Potija is out on the stage. 21. And for people in the know, they know how good this man is. He started climbing at the age of five. Yeah, so now very young. He won gold at his home World Cup in Copper last year in Slovenia. Yeah, that was quite a special moment. And then by the end of the season, he won uh, the overall lead. Uh, well, he became overall lead champion. Yeah, so he's defending that. Brings that right foot up. Oh, bit of a nervy what start for the men here. Good start. The a slap problem. The, the B layer has a terrifying job, frankly, to do right now. I don't know what he'd do if the athlete was to fall in that position, but now he's got a rope on, so things will proceed. They don't have a crash pad down on the floor or mat or anything. They do not, no. Matt, volunteer. Well, as a mat, I'll do a great job. <laughs> Wait. Oh, the puns are rocking here in the commentary box. Uh, it's getting late. This is like past my bedtime. <laughs> It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll say some outrageous things from now on. <laughs> All right, we're watching the men's routes. Luca, very slow at the start, making sure of these moves. It did look like it was hard right from the beginning. Yeah, when they mentioned tricky start, that wasn't. I didn't visualize that. I thought they were going to come in with some other holds. Yeah, and a Ooh. big swing. And the setters did say we could lose some athletes there, but Luca is through cleanly. Right, he stands up on that right toe, makes the clip. <laughs> Has a look at the time, he's done a lot of climbing already. He's only about, well, only five clips into this, but they're low clips here. And ter they turn out to be quite important. Yeah, we've already seen a misclip. In fact, Shianso is standing right in front of us in the commentary box. She's, Jane has her arms around her. They're talking together. It's really nice to see. But right now, Luca is on the wall. And he's got to be careful of quick draws, too. Every time I see a quick draw, I want them to clip it immediately. Okay, he's in. Thank goodness. 
So the root here kind of S's on itself, goes over to the left. That left foothold is the only one he's got, all dual techs, until he drops into that hole. He goes far to the left, cuts back to the right. Just keeps an eye on the time. He probably does beginning moves. I mean, he was very delicate and careful, and that's how you have to approach a sequence like that. But it might be quite some valuable time he will need later on. Yeah, I think maybe he keeps looking down because you don't always expect a start to be that difficult. You're just trying to sort of time things. All right, so he starts the moves over to the right now. Left, right foot on the jib, left foot on the no text, which he thinks better of. And wraps underneath, nearing the halfway point now. Yeah, there was some, I guess, some decisions with his footwork, and that definitely cost him some energy. Just he's just clearly looking, and thinking what to do. Yeah, this was one of the moves that Rusev was also imagined as something hard. Yeah, those double half moons framing the wall nicely. But this is a tricky sequence coming up. A big move. Slightly blind pocket around the corner. You can just see it coming into your screen now. It's about it's to hit the, the light. Shadows. It's in the shadows. You know when something is in the shadows, you have to see it, see it in a creepy way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll, uh, no. <laughs> color up my commentary. <laughs> All right, reaches over, matches the side pull, has the toe in. This move is blind from the angle. This is the hole that I said earlier was difficult to see for the ground. The athletes would have had to have gone a long way back to stare around the corner. And he's taking his time on this. But the time is ticking away, two minutes, and he's still a couple of meters below the head wall. And there's quite a lot of climbing to go on the head wall. But he knows this, this move is gonna be tricky and hard. Yeah, it's a bigger, no feet really. Oh, feet on the edge of that sign for a sec, pulled it away, then to the blind pocket. And it's a good hold, once you get it, wants the crowd. <laughs> oh, he's not using the thumb jib. The shaking on those feet. The whole left leg is shaking. Goes on the head wall. Cloud of chalk left behind. He says goodbye to Shamani. All right, one done. First time we get to see this route and first potential super hard crux move. Remember how fit Luca is. Just because he came out last does not mean anything that he can't make a podium place. We've seen it happen before. So Luca leaves us, walks over to the deck chairs there on the right. The women have vacated and they've come over to us. It's really interesting again, looking out at everyone's faces. This was Luca turning. Move up with the right, that's finally what sent him to the ground, but a good performance from him. Sam Avazu is out. French crowd get behind him as you'd expect. They've already had Helene on the podium here tonight. Can they get the double from Sam? Nod to the B layer, approaches the wall. On the way here, I bumped into a French, uh, a former French lead champion, and I was like, can you tell me anything about Sam? He was just like, he's so strong. Full stop. Who was that? Geoffroy. Uh, ah. Yeah, Sam is super, super strong. Gets the toe hook in. And the big move into the big pockets. Now you have to aim for small jibs. Gaston light with the right hand.
That's the crimp he has to hold on to. Not very good. Upgrades the right hand immediately. Much faster as well from Sam than Luca. Deciding to take that tactic. He's probably so hyped to climb here in front of a home crowd. And he only climbed here in Chamonix in, uh, in semifinals in 2018 and 2022. Last year, he was in finals. And what an e-bar he's found as well. There is a jib uh, on that half moon at the back of it. That's what he's using. On the right side, you mean? Yes, exactly, for that right foot. And then the knee obviously presses in. That's a good find from Sam. Out onto the crimps. He's moving quite quickly through this route, isn't he? He really is. I guess it shows off his bouldering shape <laughs> from Innsbruck in third place. It's a bit surprising that he didn't... Um, he was in semifinals in Innsbruck, but I guess he was probably tired from the boulder round. Yeah, he might still be in that boulder form, but certainly whatever he's decided to do, he's wanted to go for it down lower. Luca wanted to take his time, be more sure of the moves. Shaking uh, off. Well, whatever, he's reached the same position. Now this blind move around the corner. There's a bit of chalk left by the setters to hint at where it is. Or is that from Luca? Might have been from Luca, but they said it was marked a little, mm. so perhaps. I think it was Luca's thumb, certainly, that caused that. That was a flawless jump. Yeah, <laughs> accuracy there from Sam. Good work. And the crowd is going wild. Well, they're watching their athlete climb into a gold medal position. And he's close to it. I think this will upgrade his score. Just flickered his eyes around. His... Right hand on the crimp. Gets the blind foot up in the lead now. He's breathing heavily. Those are such small holes. And 20 degrees overhanging up there, so it's not like a slab. And from now onwards, meant to play with the volumes, the gap in between the volumes. Gets that now. Sam Abazu is pretty close and topping out. The crowd are behind him, three moves away. Big traverse to the no. left was a foot pop that did him. He's got his head in his hands for a sec, but that is the high point and will take some beating. He seemed so in control in the flow. That was so surprising. So Sam goes at the top. We'll watch a replay to see exactly where that foot pop was. There's a bubble. Well, that's flash though on the wall as Sam looks up as well. He's trying to spot it. Sam Abazu will take that moment. That is pretty iconic. Sam swinging around on the top of the wall. Good work from him. Look for the right foot. Foul the right foot, but that was the bobble that sent him. Just didn't quite have it. I wish we got a close up on, on his footwork over there. Next. Dohyun Lee is out. Let's see what he can do. Now here we go. Third athlete out. And we know with the new high point is right up on that head wall. I wonder if he thinks that uh, Sam topped because the crowd went wild. Possibly did, yeah. I'm not sure if it's, yeah, he might have heard that. He certainly would have heard the reaction to it. Mm. All right, so fingers underneath, shoulder, awkward move. In fact, you can now see why Luca took his time on that. It's a hard sequence. I think he'll do it, go for the uh, a clip and a rest here. Stretches out towards the left, gets the side pull. He's trying to figure out whether he goes to the left or does the double. I think he should have done the double off that move the first time, and now he adjusts. <laughs> Holding the one armor and a full one armor there. What was resting? Nice resting. Just on one, one arm. Yeah. 
Also coming from, from a very strong boulder season. I mean, he did win in Prague this year. Yeah, that goal was pretty incredible. Great finals, that one, if you haven't. Adam got the silver. Dogan is trying to figure this out there. Reaches up towards the crimp, which is on top of that volcano-like hold, out towards the next crimp. Here's another, like Luca. Perhaps Luca was struggling down low, not being that slow. All right, bumps the right hand over into the pinch now. And we know there's a potential knee bar in here. It'll be interesting to see if he uses it or sees it. We saw the little chip that's inside there that helps with that, with that pinch with her left hand. Now he matches on it. Yeah, he's there, shakes out now into the Gaston. Well, he's in a knee position. Would need to go a little higher up to get the knee in. It's just comfortable hanging out there. <laughs> right, shaking out. Yeah, on those, on those type of holds and rests right now, his um, index finger on his left hand just slotted in between the hold and the wall, and you can really like hang on it down. Almost, yeah, almost without. like a finger jam style. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when you're resting on, on ice tools, your hand is just resting on the on the bottom. So you don't have to over grip. Who knows, maybe it's been ice climbing or dry tooling. It's quite a big scene in South Korea. It is indeed. All right, left hand, left foot over as he reaches into the underclick. Out with the right hand. Looking pretty casual as he stands on that left foot, but the time is going. He's another one a little slower. To the fourth of the half moon dishes. He's also taking his time though. I mean, he only has two minutes and a half left. He's just a little past the halfway mark of this wall, but... Oh, he's going to trust that heel to rock up on. He does, and now he's starting to speed up a bit as he gets the toe in. The DJ ramps things up as well. Into the second of the side pulls. Now you can clearly see those thumbs marks left from the other athletes. I'll know where he's aiming for. Makes the match again. You can see how much chalk's on his hold. It shows you how long the athletes have been resting on this. Probably the best rest in the route. Big jump into the pocket. So it was nearly dropped. Shaking out with the left hand. Just fingers he into that shallow like pocket. Jumped above it and then dropped down. Looks for the clip now with the heel in. He's in third now. A minute on the clock coming up to. That's not a comfortable resting position. <laughs> it's not great. He's shaking out wherever possible. Oh. And he does slip. You can see it burning. Another goes. Enough for third place at the moment with three gone. <laughs> so Alex Makos will be our fourth out. We will make a difference to the podium. So he comes down to be greeted by the cameraman and his fellow athletes who are waiting for him to arrive on the right of the stage. Let's have a replay of that again. So he didn't get the knee bar, but he got the drop knee in. Shook out for a while there. Out to the pocket. <laughs> did you just see the little shake that he did with his left hand while he, he grabbed the pocket? A big fall down. All right, three done, five to go. Alex Magos up next from Germany.
darkness fully set now in Chamonix. You can see the uh, logos on the wall on the left. And Alex Magos is out. So, little smile in his face as he approaches the wall. Checks out this first moves again. So, Setter. Luca made that move look really <laughs> sketchy, the first athlete out. I mean, you don't want to fall before the first clip. You really don't. I no. know it's not that far off the ground, but... Especially in Vila's, if you saw that one, mm -hmm. the first clip was a long way up. It was about the height of the second clip. All right, Alex on the right hand, easy through the crimps, just making sure of every move, gets the toe locked in. Those are our three that have gone so far. When he starts climbing on a lead route, he always seems so in control and almost <laughs> makes, it, makes it look too easy. And then by the time he's like about to fall off, it's so sudden. Yeah, he can, uh, he can just suddenly go, can't he? Mid-move. And just looks just so chill and controlled at, at the beginning of the routes. Just deciding on which crimp to use there. Uh, he decides on the top one. Comes out above the dish onto the next crimp. And you realize how crimpy this first part is, actually, when you see it like this. Alex likes the crimp, though. Drops the knee way down. Makes the clip, is into the jib. And that's the position, it's a good angle to see where he's at, about halfway. Does it, he almost spotted that knee bar. Yeah, it's interesting, Sam's position on that knee bar, it was really leaning way over to the left of it, it looks, Unnatural. When you see Alex in that position, that looks like a better resting position than the one Sam found. So it was good instinctive reading of the route from him. I'm gathering you're not fond of knee bars for resting. No, I love a knee bar. It's just it's just the angle that Sam was at. Yeah. You see yeah, how yeah. it works, but then and went out to that hole. The... No, I just also prefers to keep going. Because Sam kind of did that. He upgraded that right foot when he got it in. For Alex here in Chamonix in 2009, it was his World Cup debut. And guess what? He got into semi-finals. There we go. Not a bad debut to have, is it? Gone on from strength to strength from there. All right, Alex on the crimps. Nearly dropped that, saved himself. We'll get the heel locked in, reaches through, and we know there's another opportunity for him to shake out and rest here. We missed him for a couple of years on the comp scene. Like, took a long break from 2011 to 2017 and just climbed all over the world. <laughs> Possibly every uh, hard boulder and route. I mean, he got up to 9B plus outdoors. Yeah, he's a very active outdoor climber. That's what most like, of his off season doing. And likes pockets. Likes pockets, so, true. So, yeah, in his off season, like in Margalef. I mean, these are quite big pockets compared to Margalef. And they are. <laughs> You've touched them, have you, Terry? All of them. Right. I went on like 2,000 routes. <laughs> I'm a fan of Margalev climbing. Uh, Alex is setting up for this blind move around the corner. Jumps to the pocket, holds the swing. Legs kicking above the crowd as they clap. They're all sitting on the road down there watching. It's shut, don't worry. Super I did packed. tell my friends to go over there for this move specifically. Out with the left hand on the pinch. Drops to the right, gets the side pull. Alex uncoils, slowly, slowly does it as he tries to find the clip. It's kind of trapped between his foot, it's beneath him. It's awkward, but he's got it in. 
Yeah, with the rope touching the foot like that, it just creates some rope drag and makes it heavier to clip. So not ideal. And he falls, a camera zoomed in on the hold he lost. Showing us actually how nasty it was, the one he was going for. But that has moved him up into silver medal. Sam Avazu still leading the way with 50. It's more like he looked right away as his, at his fingers when he popped off. And just remember seeing him in qualies, like he kept chalking up even like before the route. He was like waiting half an hour before and kept chalking up. <laughs> Shake of his head, I think he's worked hard there. And Alex will leave us halfway through the men's final. Thumbs up to our camera. That was the move down low. Into a pretty big hold, and the men making it. It looks dramatic, but it's not too bad for them. And this was the more dramatic move. Feet flying above his head, and finally, watch his hand on that left crimp. Got it for a second, um, and the right hand fires. And he didn't have, uh, he wasn't pushing on anything with his right foot. Well, Alex says goodbye. He has to wait and see. He's in silver medal position at the moment. So Sam Avazu on 50, followed by Alex Magos, Luca Potica, and Dohyan Lee make up our top four. Four still to come Stefan Schretz, Colin Duffy, Serato and Raku, and Toby Roberts. Final four here this evening. Have a bit of a pause here as we get set for our second half. A couple of minutes to go here as we wait. So four athletes to go, three podium places available. And we wait for our next athlete out, who will be Stefan. We all wait as the camera pans around. In fact, let's watch some highlights from those first four climbers. Luca reaching through, upgrading the feet onto the hands. Slapped out right, couldn't make it. Yeah, it never seemed like he settled into the route, though. And the start just took him maybe a bit longer than expected. This jump was immaculate. <laughs> And nailing the pocket, kicking with the feet. Definitely the bouldering uh, training showing off. And then, yeah, he managed. Couldn't find that right foot. It was un awkward underneath your body. Probably also really pumped at the, at the same time up at that point. He's our current leader, though. Dokian Lee fell a little earlier, stuck the move to the pocket Just well. Just that little shake. Little shakes. And a fall from the pocket. Here we have Magos. Not as, uh, he didn't seem as um, confident on this jump as Sam. And then just a shame up there that he, that he couldn't find something for his right foot or maybe it was sweat on, on his left hand because up there they are going from for some really small crimps. Yeah, that was the story of the, set of the finals so far. So Stefan Schretz is waiting behind that light, you can see. He's ready to go. He'll be followed by Colin Duffy, Serato and Toby. Stefan is out though. 16th in Vila, 21st in Innsbruck for that, the full bouldering season. And he's 179 centimeters tall, so tallest athlete of the of the finals and we'll see if that will play a part maybe with that knee bar or further up high let's wait and see he's on the tricky first start where you've just got to be confident i think it's just a case of trusting your movement every athlete who's just gone for it down here has looked good palming upwards <laughs> i'm not sure what to do Right, right hand onto the crimp now, gets the left underneath, blows a bit of chalk off his fingers. Makes the double clip, definitely the way to do that. 
feet through, launches into the pocket, will match it and take a moment to shake out on what is a good hold, but it's the feet that are a problem here. You can't really stand down on them. Hooks that right in. Yeah, just manages to find this little rest here and there, also in the semi-final route. He wasn't really rushing through anything. Maybe it's something they learned from outdoor climbing, because he's also quite an avid outdoor climber. He even climbed like 9A plus in, in Oliana, which is a crack that has some real long and pumpy routes. So he, he learned, he for sure learned how to manage the pump. Yeah, he's got the endurance game down. Bumps the right hand over. And it's such a mind set to have as well. He's making sure of that left hand, working it in, brings the feet under, drops into the pocket, just saves that move. Oh, a double save. That might have burnt a bit, but we had to get something back on this rest. Yeah, pop the hands, pop the foot. Try to figure it out, and we'll need to take a breath here just to steady himself again. Sam still the only one to see yeah, the knee. Totally <laughs> walk through that uh, that rest there, a potential rest. A good footwork from Stefan as he crosses under. Oh, swings in, bumps again. All right, so he's got the clip in. One more tricky move, and he's got a bit of a shake out before thinking about that pocket to come. Crosses through again, brings the right foot up. Oh, oh, big slip again, he saves it. That was a bicycle slip. So brings the right hand into the pinch, upgrades it, gets the hook in. Probably just needs a couple of seconds to shake and set up this jump. Look at the climbers going on in the background <laughs> of that EP wall. Recreating a moment, maybe. <laughs> Can you imagine in a couple of years? <laughs> and a fall, <laughs> fall in the background. <laughs> uh, Stefan is on slightly more difficult terrain here. He's getting ready for the move to the pocket. Watch the right hand, just holds on. His feet are still slipping all over the place. He's in fifth at the moment, moves towards Dohyan's score of 39. Flick of the lift, wrist. Out to the side pull now with the right hand. Brings the left up. Right foot out. Again with the left, but he's not high enough. Look at the score. He's still on the podium at the moment. 41, his score. Sam still leading the way. Yeah, Sam came out pretty early, but set a, a quite an important high point. Yeah, very important. The one to beat at the moment. Way up into the head wall. For Sam. So, three to go, and we'll start to get some confirmations of podium positions. Colin Duffy, Serato Anraku, and Toby Roberts to come. This men's roots seems to build no specific crux, perhaps, just hard moves after each other. Until you run out of steam on that head wall, well, that's the story so far. They did, the root setters did describe it as pumpy. And that's certainly what we're seeing. A couple of unsettling moves though that jump down low. And I don't think that jump to the pocket seems to, like nobody had so much difficulty uh, so far. Yeah, it doesn't seem that bad. Once you sort of commit to it and go for it, Alex is taking photos of the photographer down at the front. <laughs> <laughs> He's congratulated. By the other athletes, as we always see here at Climbing Cups. Yeah, there's such a good camaraderie between the athletes. It really tells a lot of the sport. All right, well, Colin Duffy is up. Let's see how he deals with these moves. Team USA has been on the road for a while. A few of them have gone home now. Let's take a bit of time before the World Champs. Others deciding to stay. So about half the team in Europe at the moment. Colin creeps upwards, stands on his tiptoes. 
Yeah, these moves, I think if they feel like they go well, you have the confidence for the next couple of them, but if they feel techy, you see an athlete struggle, pause a little. Colin dropping back down, he's having a think about this. No, Colin resets as he goes up. Just wants to make sure he doesn't have a silly mistake. Yeah, quite. He's making this. I mean, he's using some quite delicate moves. All right, now he launches up though, gets that and here toe it in. <laughs> yeah, and it might be good for him actually just to get off the feet for a bit, do some campusy moves. So activate all of those muscles. Yeah, I mean, he's one of those climbers. He likes a more of a dynamic way of doing it. And you see him sometimes relax. Oh, but that right hand popped big time as he went. For a second, I thought there was a slip. I did too. Oh, I think it might have been, but he saved it going into that jug. And an awkward clip for Colin Duffy. Hero takes the legs through. A bit like Luca taking a lot of time on this bottom sequence. Hopefully he'll manage to find some flow. Yeah, he trusts that left foot pressing into it. Left hand into the crimp. Tiny holds throughout, just <laughs> screwed on to bigger ones. Precise with his feet on the no-tex, out towards the pinch, holds that well. It is quite a funny sight when, uh, when in reality it's a crimp and then they use such a big volume. Yeah, it's uh, end, deceptive. It's, yeah, it's like the old style comp uh, roots just with a lot bigger holds. Yeah, Colin slid his hand down the wall there. I don't think he was falling, but it certainly slowed him a bit. And Colin isn't looking 100% yet. He's fifth in Vila. And he's found the knee bar, Sam Aversvu, styly. I said earlier that right foot was on the jib. I don't think it actually is in that position. I think it's on the curve of the whole of the volume itself. It's a weird looking knee bar, but well found by Colin. He's climbing. Quite controlled, but slow. Oh, that was a swing. Yeah, swing from Colin. Little shake of his head. He's making these mistakes that might cost him later on. It's not the cleanest of runs. Yeah, it's like he almost wants to do a move, and then it just doesn't quite happen. Yeah, he's looking for the next quick draw now. Struggles to find the clip, gets it in this time. Crosses through and cuts loose again. He's been pretty wild out there. Stretches all the way around that black volume. Gets the toe on, bumps the right hand, gets the left toe in and the heel now. And here we go, this move is coming up. The hole at the bottom of the route builds to this moment. It looks like he's going to jump right into the audience on that shot. That's the hold he's going for. It's good if he commits. Is he going to go statically towards it? He's setting up. I think he's going to pop now, but he's got to release that toe that's going to cause a bit of a swing. Oh, okay. Oh. Holds the swing for okay. Colin. That must give him some confidence. Yeah, he's nailed that jump into the pocket, breathing now as he comes up with the left. And he's had his moments, but he's kept it together. It shows good strength, good mind games here. I mean, let's remember he was the first, he was the youngest um, competitor to join in the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. And he's missed that clip at the moment. He went for the hold, took the fall. And he is not that happy about that. But considering the amount of moments he had throughout that run, to keep going like that, to climb that high on the head wall, if you think every mistake would have cost him a little bit in terms of energy. 
was strong from Colin. All right, two to go. Colin Duffy is done. Only representative from Team USA. Oh, well, we know one person on the podium so far. We do indeed. Well, Sam Avazu will get a medal tonight in front of his home crowd. Second French athlete to do so. Serato and Raku, though, will make a decision what colour that might be. Let's watch Colin again. Yeah, he just had these moments. That was a foot slip down low. It takes a lot of strength to save something like that. He managed it that time, but it would have cost him a bit of energy. Move to the pocket was casual. Straight away into the arm, rest. But he started to burn out there. Big fall backwards. Colin is done, and he was pretty annoyed. Well, a hand appears from behind the curtain, and Serato walks into the gap created. So Serato is so exciting to watch throughout the season. Yes, indeed. I mean, you all, you kept mentioning he's more of a lead climber. So considering that he did those results in bouldering, and at 16, climbing like this, it's so impressive. He's a bit like Yanya, and I don't want to throw names around, but the way that he reads a sequence, executes it without too many doubts, I think that shows some real good climbing technique. And again, it's not that obvious at 16. No, it's not at all. He's learned from some of the best, though, within that Japanese squad. They're bringing him through. Let's see how he can do tonight. It's, it's not overhype. <laughs> <laughs> I made that mistake before. Isn't it our job, technically? <laughs> technically so, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a balancing act. But we are expecting some big things here for Serato. Tends to not really have bad days. Big leap to the right, holds the swing straight into that straight arm resting position. Brings the right foot up into the heel, into the crimp. Bumps with those crimps, solid so far from Serato. He's trying to just hold the energy, save it for the head wall, up with the pinch. And we can see that difference between Collins' run and Serato. It's these moments where he's a bit cleaner. So as you know, I like numbers and how they match. So far in Villers, he got sixth place, and in Innsbruck, he got fourth place. So I guess it has to be a two this time around. <laughs> right, I, I'm following your maths there. It took me a moment. I'm with you. Because he jumps from yeah, two no, no, and no. two. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I'm, I'm with jumping you. him higher. Yep, yep. Thank you. Because it's a jumpy route. So far, we saw two jumps. Yes. There's a theme. <laughs> there is a theme. <laughs> Serato, you need to uh, get Terra's OCD brain in order here. You need a two. You, <laughs> you need didn't second see place. the mood board back there. <laughs> All right, well, Serato rests on the heel, now cuts loose above the crowd, brings the right toe down. Bumps to the third half moon dish on the wall. And just like Toby, he topped both qualification routes. Yeah, so he's had some good performances so far this weekend. Serato looking calm down at the clock. That right arm with a slight shake in it, just showing how much effort he's putting in. He's not displaying it, though. <laughs> he knows the rest is coming up. I think anyone can see that athletes have been chalking up here. Clips with the toe in. Oh, he was thinking about that clip. He checked underneath the other clip. Yeah, well, as we've seen, you've got to make sure. But again, you see in, in his climbing style how efficient he, he is compared to other climbers that were looking around for that toe hook on the left side. He just placed it while, while going up. Yeah, and like almost in instinctively. Sorry. Exactly. No, you're right. He's, he's in a good position. He does it naturally. Ah, talent. Isn't it nice to have? <laughs> it's nice to have annoying when you don't. <laughs> so Serato keeping an eye on the clock as he rests here. There's one over to his left. That's the one he keeps catching. 
Right, shake out. I think he's almost ready to go for this pocket. No hesitation from Serato. As with Sam, the boulder in him coming out. Reaches through, and he's still in seventh. It just shows how important the head wall has been for the men's comp. And he's in it now, standing just above the metal coping. Climbing quickly as that pump starts to come now. Nice, Third. Nice drop knee, really kept him in. Close to the wall. Well, he's just looking for a blind foot. His leg is shaking so much. I think he just had to find it. It's right underneath him, and he wanted to make sure of it. You can see him just testing it almost. Aaron <laughs> finds a heel hook, a really subtle heel hook. Well, he's got plenty <laughs> of time, and he's looking in control still, but now he works. This was where we saw Alex fall. Oh, that left foot wasn't secure. It is now onto the side pull, fingertips only. Serato. shaking. Up to, well, let's wait for the score. 48 is beneath Sam Avazu's time. Sorry, score. So that means that Sam is guaranteed silver. With Toby Roberts still to climb. Final athlete will come in a minute. Serato, though, up onto the podium. Big wave to the audience from him. He pulls the rope down <laughs> and does the knot. As we head towards the 11 p.m. marker here in Chamonix, a late evening for the athletes, but everyone enjoying the climbing here in the Place du Mont Blanc. Hopefully you are at home as well. I'm Matt Groom, joined by Teresa Corti here in the commentary box. Hello. And we've been watching a pretty exciting final. That was Serato's very casual jump up to the pocket. Look at his face. <laughs> He's like, yep. Nice. I, I got it. That was the left foot that was less secure. And look at this fingertip move. That was where he popped. Dropping in with the right. Couldn't hold it. Nothing left for Serato. And he comes down. All right, final athlete of this evening. Toby Roberts will be out from Great Britain. Qualifying in the first position. Can he get onto the podium? Just 18 year old. We haven't seen him in that many World Cups. I mean, he did great on the youth scene, but well, he's, yeah, he's a fresh face. He's new to it. I mean, Briançon last year was his first comp, and he was a bit sort of surprised to do as well as he did. I was surprised, to be perfectly honest, he did as well as he did. I know how good he is, but coming into your first competition is always tough. But from then, he's just built bronze medal in Edinburgh. Gold, of course, in Brixton for the bouldering. And again, go and watch that final boulder. What a <laughs> moment from Toby. And his fellow teammates in team, team GB call him the Terminator. So they do. He's that, got. Uh, that's quite telling. Yeah, well, exactly. He just does not give up. He's relentless, that man. Does a slightly different way in here. Confident from the beginning. All right, well, our last climber. Did he just totally ignore the left, uh, the left, I think he did. left hole? Yeah, he did it differently from my knowledge to how everyone else has done it. But it worked. He makes sure of these first moves. Not easy off the ground here. Toes in, crosses through. So, Toby, the final athlete who can make an impact on the podium. Sam Avazu, Serato Anraku, Alex Magos currently make up our top three. Will any of them be kicked off, bumped down? He reaches up for a clip. Solid climbing so far from Toby. Just outside of the podium in Vilas, he was fourth there. Strong on the right heel as he comes to the crimp. Thought about going all the way up, decided to do the better beater, which is that. Left and then right. Up to the left, ignoring the one by his face. So more of a, f for later, a foot. Yeah, they look like kind of the same hesitation that Alex had, that he went to reach and feel the holds, and also uh, Toby really had to think and decide which, which crimps to use. 
And now Toby is in, brings the left foot up onto the jib. There's so much creativity involved in climbing. I mean, we've seen, what, uh, 16 athletes, and they all did something slightly different. Just like endless possibilities. Absolutely, yeah. and especially this sequence of holds. We've had two athletes finding the knee bar. Toby doesn't even look for it. Shakes out that right hand hard. Reads the next series of moves on the right traverse. Three minutes, 47 on the clock. Also taking his time then on, on the bottom section, isn't he? Yeah, he's not the fastest, is Toby. Does tend to time it pretty well. Came close in Vilas, had to speed up through the top. Hearing the crowd now as he gets going, leans back, looks down. Enjoying that sound coming up at him. I mean, what a feeling this is. As a climber, to be in last position, climbing last in Chamonix in a World Cup. I mean, it's about as high up that ladder as you could get. And it's his first time climbing out here. So whatever he will do, it's his PB here in Chamonix. There we go, so good for Toby. Eighth at the moment, all the men getting high above that pocket jump. Changes the hands. All right, here we go, this is the jump. It's a good hold, he's got to commit, he's not really pausing, goes for the lower hand holds, changes his hands back to the left. Sets himself, resets oh himself. <laughs> Toby, come on, You're giving us a heart attack here. Pulls on with both, the crowd behind him, he makes the yes. jump. It's just about relaxing your body, I think, going a bit more vertically yeah. into that. There's a better way of controlling the swing. And he's a pretty good outdoor climber. I mean, in Britain, coming up through the years, he's taking off um, hard route after hard route. And I wonder how actually climbing outdoors plays a part in timing these routes. Because you have no pressure from a timer outdoors. Exactly. We actually saw him in Raventor climbing outdoors, if you oh, remember yeah, that. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. He was crushing 9As back then. It was such a weird crack to go to. Everybody was like filming themselves. I guess to study the moves. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Craig in the UK. Toby fumbles with that clip, gets it in now into the crimps. Looks down for a toe. Oh, this is where Toby Oof. is really good. These moves where it shouldn't be possible, but it somehow is for him. 46 though, and still fourth. Meg, up. now he gets bumped up. Found a micro rest, just chocks up as much as he can. He just finds these positions where he can rest on. He keeps looking down for the time, but... I, he's got something left still. Yeah, 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 definitely. High left toe. Wants to rock up high, he's going to try to do that. Playing with the small foothold, trying to make it work. All right, crosses through. Up to the pinch, we're getting close to a top. 35 seconds, Toby drop knees high above. This yeah. could be it. <laughs> Toby knows he's got stuff in the tank here and he knows it's a jump coming. He leaps, he gets it. Toby Roberts is going to clip the chains in Chamonix his first time and that will be a gold medal, his second of the year. Toby Roberts is the real deal all-round athlete and he cannot believe it up there. This is incredible. Wow, from Toby. What a showman, I gotta say, as well. And what a celebration. Toby Roberts climbed last year in Chamonix. He was the only one to top the route. And that man is in a different kind of form at the moment. And as we move towards the world champs, I mean, you've got to be thinking about him for that combined. And possibly an Olympic place. Gold medal in Boulder, gold medal in lead. Yeah, I mean, he has some pretty good chances coming up to burn. Certainly one of the best all-rounders in the game at the moment. Toby Roberts wins. And he goes back on oh. stage. 
And you can see the crowd on their feet wanting to get a photo of him. And he will just take a moment to take it all in as the lights shine on him. Toby Roberts waves to the crowd. We'll hear a bit more from him in the flower ceremony. Yes. <laughs> All right, so Toby and Alex shake hands, Serato as well. Let's see if we can hear what they say. <laughs> Alex making sure <laughs> for his podium. Which reminded me, Serato seems to win everything at the moment, so it's, uh, it's worth remembering that in lead. Well, this was Toby shaking that pub out of his left hand. Big move out to the pocket that looked easy from him. Hyped the crowd at the top. He knew he had it in the bag, stuck the final jump. And at that moment, the excitement started to build for Toby and his celebration, brilliant to see. All right, Serato comes onto the stage. Bronze medal, and as Alex just said, first podium for him. And Sam, Sam. Abizu, <laughs> two French athletes, get a medal. <laughs> I think Sarata thought like he wanted to move over there. He's <laughs> just saying hello. And then finally, the man of the hour. He's still Toby he's, Roberts. He's still pumped. I think he's, oh, nearly falls over as well. Terminally pumped, probably. So Toby says congratulations to the other two. Well, interviews and podiums to come here this evening. Well, I gotta say, he terminated that route. Absolutely did. The Terminator nailed that one. Good job from Toby. All right, Toby will lead the stage. We'll get set for the podium. Terry, you're going to go and uh, interview him. Yes. Down at the back. So I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Yes, indeed. See you later. So Sam Abazu makes his way back. The athletes just gather up their stuff and they'll go towards the edge of the stage now. All right, well, Terry is getting ready for the interview. Volunteers rapidly clearing the stage to make way for the podium. <laughs> they are preparing themselves there. That's where the podium will be, underneath the lead wall. The interview is taking place behind the stage, so sometimes you can see them on the live stream or on the broadcast. You can't with this one. Terry will be back there, mic in hand waiting and we're just going to get confirmation of the results so Toby Roberts with a top Sam Abazu 50 close but not quite silver medal for him Serato Raku 48 gets him the bronze Alex Mayer Stefan Schweitz Colin Duffy Luca Potija and Dohyun Lee right we're ready to go and speak to Toby Roberts backstage so let's go over to Terry that was amazing to watch and your dad was right there with us yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't say anything different Hey, Toby, congratulations. That was insanely cool to watch. How does it feel? It feels absolutely incredible. I'm a bit lost for words right now. I'm still incredibly pumped. <laughs> My heart's still going. I've just come off the route. But wow, there's, there's no words. The crowd was incredible. Climbing up there just, just felt so surreal. I gave a massive fight on the route and I felt, yeah, just no words really. And compared to winning a Boulder World Cup, how does it feel to win in lead? For me, lead's always been extra special. I really enjoy lead competitions. I really enjoy the aspect of fighting and giving you absolute maximum on something. And doing that and then hearing the crowd get behind you, properly being able to give everything to one sort of route and, and fight to the max felt, uh, felt incredible. So you like the pump? I love the pump. I love <laughs> fighting the pump especially. Nice. And will we see you next week in Briançon? Uh, I'm not going to be doing Brian's on. I'm focusing uh, for the World Championships in Bern. So I'm going to head back, get some, uh, get some needed rest, uh, do some training, and then, yeah, we'll psyched for Bern. <laughs> nice, cool. cool. Well, enjoy the night. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. Great work from him. His second gold of the season after that gold in Brixen. And now the podium is almost ready. Let's see some highlights from earlier on, shall we? Watch how the athletes got there. So Serato made the jump over to the right, held the pocket. 
That was the swing, nice and casual from him. The left foot, though, was not casual. That caused him some difficulties. Got it in finally. Dropping into the side pull. And then coming down, Sam Avizu swinging through the air. Silver medal for him, 50, a high score. And eventually goes to the ground. Sam raises his hands in the air, waves goodbye to the crowd. And Toby Roberts, though, this was his run through this lead wall. Wanted the crowd behind him there, trying to get rid of the pump, shaking it out as is his style. Immediately relaxed on the pocket as he holds the swing back. That way he did it, just allowing the momentum to take him back towards the wall. Didn't panic. And at the top, he wanted something from the crowd. He had lots left in the tank. And the final big jump finished off his evening. Gold medal for Toby Roberts. <laughs> Great to see from him. Well, what a competition. It started off strangely, Terry, with that uh, technical incident for the women's, but developed into a very good final. Tricky women's route, there's some big jumps along the way. Yeah, and his men's route definitely delivered. Yeah, it was action packed. It's so nice to speak to Toby. You could really see, like, first of all, he's so humble, but an absolute crusher. And, uh, and yeah, like you he, he, like he said, like quite a special for him lead is quite special well we heard him you mentioned his dad at the beginning of, of the interview um so his dad always watching always following him around his dad is a big part of his his whole thing because yeah. uh, he's at every single competition yeah, yeah. With him. he's, he's helping, belaying i guess he's helping him out with his youtube channel yeah. he's also doing youtube videos and like uh, a resume i guess from every competition which is quite cool to see those insights um for all the women out there, I'm pretty sure they know about a really good cream. It's called like Eight Hours from Elizabeth Arden, and I was quite surprised that Toby uses it as well. Right, thank you, Tafel. You do an advert there in the Northern Ireland. Oh, I can't. You're getting paid for this or something? No, I mean, I wish. I mean, if that's the deal, I'm going to promote the heck out of some brands, I'll tell you that much. Uh, well, we're waiting for the uh, awards ceremony. That's our cable cam that's uh, currently traveling over the audience's head towards the back of the arena, revealing the stage itself where. The podium is still not quite... Oh, is it in place? It is in place. Over towards the left, by the speed wall this time. So there is the podium with the awning set behind it. And the athletes will be waiting backstage. We have a few minutes of pause here before the next round, before the next podium, I should say. Women will be awarded as well. You can see them now making their way over to the left. Darkness fully falling here in Chamonix. The stars not out tonight, a bit of a cloud overhead, and that cloud did save the stadium in the later part of this afternoon. Kept the sun off the wall, came out briefly before the comp, and because of that delay, actually, we climbed a little later that might have saved some skin of the athletes on some cooler holds. Maybe it was a secret technique from the root setters, <laughs> wanting the athletes to climb later. Perhaps. So they could top. The conspiracy easily. deepens here <laughs> in Chamonix. <laughs> All right, with well, the award ceremony to come. Speed wall on the left, that was the other night, just to remind you, do go and check that out. Two brand new winners in that competition, two new golds. And that lead wall will sleep for another year now. It'll get taken down, presumably put into some kind of giant storage somewhere and then rebuilt. EP doing a good job. For the rest of the season, Briançon is next. We go south a little from Chamonix. Down to a bit of a climbing paradise down there. A new wall in Briançon as well, so excited to see that. That's this coming week. 
And then a couple of weeks off for the circuit, well, everyone gets ready for the World Champs, and then the World Champs, the beginning of August in Bern. Big, big event, that one. Multiple days of climbing, super exciting. And of course, a couple of Olympic places to give away. Double points as well for the athletes, and that's important for the qualifying series and for the, Euro the continental qualifying series as well for those Olympic places. So a big competition. How many Olympic places is it in, the, in Bern? Top three? I think two, but I'll have to check that. So two available. I think it's the, the winner, I think. But I will have a little look. I should probably have my head around that one. <laughs> It's in a couple of weeks, you got time. I got plenty of time. All right, here we go. Podium time in Chamonix, which is always pretty special. The audience has all stayed for the most part. Jane in the middle, Jane in the middle. She comforted Chien So for such a long time backstage after that clip incident. And now she can take the moment to herself to enjoy this. Helene Jenico on her left, Nano Hakume on her right. Helene was a root setter here in Chamonix last year. It's incredible now she's standing on the podium. Yeah, I think it was the right decision from her to return to competing. Helene Jenico takes a bronze and is emotional out there on the stage, as of course you would be, everyone watching. So Helen takes the flowers and the medal. And a nice big check as well. And I mean that in a literal sense. Helen says thank you to her support and they were behind her all the way, as they were with Sam. And the Noha Kume has second World Cup. Brilliant from her. Silver medal. She gets that medal, which is a lot heavier than you think they are, those medals. Albert asked me about it on the live stream the other day, asked me if I'd ever picked one up, and I have, and yeah, they're very heavy. <laughs> Just to give you a little trivia knowledge at home if you're listening. Well, I guess for people like Jane Kim, she's enough to make a weight vest to do pull-ups. True. <laughs> I don't know how many kilos and gold medals she has. Someone let me know at home. All right, well, here we go. She's going to get another gold. What a performance from her. Her return year from climbing. And she's clearly in it to win it. Is Jane. Gold medal for her. Her third one here in Chamonix. I mean, if there was any doubt of her comeback, well, here she is. <laughs> exactly, she's made it back. Like she's it's here to win. It's like she never went away, let's be honest. It she feels like that. She took a like long that. break. Yeah, gave birth to her daughter. Doing her proud now as we wait and listen for the national anthem of Korea. Jane in tears on the podium as she puts the hat back on, resets herself, and they'll stand together on that top spot. All three women. Good work from them. 
after a delayed start, made things pretty tricky. Had to go through that mental juggling act. All of them keeping it together. Now will leave the stage and we'll get reset for the men. That spotlight holding on the speed wall, showing us where they'll be entering in a couple of seconds. That Chamonix logo cleverly printed on the lead wall itself there, lit up for a second in the lights. <laughs> Red triangular mountains, what a disco. There's a proper DJ set going on now. There is indeed, he's been unleashed. <laughs> Someone rein him in quick. I mean, just an idea for next year, if this whole place could turn into a big party afterwards. <laughs> Well, it does for a while. People hang around in that square for a bit before eventually they're chivied out. But uh, the bars around the area certainly are bouncing all night. 14 GB and Chris and Korea. Exactly, yeah. They will be out celebrating, you'd imagine. All right, we're waiting for the men and the men's podium. from right to left, the crowd down at the front, trying to get the photo of their heroes. All right, here we go. <laughs> Art signs in shadows on the wall. Well, the MC announces to the audience that the athletes are ready, the medals are ready backstage, and we're ready here watching. Hearts in the sky. Hearts in the sky. Don't we all love climbing? Yeah, and who's, for who's watching and never tried out climbing before, I highly recommend it as a sport. It really is good for the mind and body and definitely gives moments like this, like Toby at the top of that route. Yeah, and he's ready to be celebrated. So Toby in the mid, Sam Avazu on his right, Serato and Raku on his left. Maybe we can say that compared to last week, this is a less experienced podium. Yeah, it's from one end of the spectrum to the other, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? One week to another, things can just change. Yeah, very true. Well, we kind of expected it at this comp to have some unusual podiums, and we certainly got one that you'd look at twice if you saw it on a piece of paper. It's more that it's exciting what we'll see in Bern and then in the Olympics next year. I feel they're going to become some real familiar faces and they, names. Yeah, they could well be. We'll have to wait and find out the qualifying series all next year. Some of this year as well. It's Compton Laval, Oceana, all over the world. So, yeah, the season kind of extends itself this year a little bit. Well, Sam Avazu is caught <laughs> on the big screen. Wait for the reaction from the crowd. Silver for Sam. <laughs> so Sam gets his silver medal and finally our last medal of the evening. Toby Roberts is ready to get his second. His dad, they told us, is a pretty he's a pretty big fan of F1, and today one of his favorite won, and he won as well. We did quite sweet. Cheers, folks. I hadn't actually seen that yet, but uh, oh, <laughs> spoiler alert! <laughs> spoiler alert! I had that saved well, on my computer to watch. First up and wins. Is that a surprise? Oh, super spoiler. Not anymore. <laughs> In Silverstone, so you know, Team GB, 
Ah, it's in a Britain. seamless transition, that, Terry. Got seamless. It? Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you. Oh. Right, Toby gets the flowers, the gold medal, and we will hear the national anthem of Great Britain ring out throughout this arena. Toby's first time here, and I think he'll remember this night for a while. Gold for Toby. Well, you can hear Team GB singing in the background. And that signals the end of tonight's climbing activities. Coming up to 11.15, how on earth did that happen here in Chamonix? Well, the evening will go for a long time tonight. Great from all three athletes. Some of them moving on to Brian Song, others resting. Well, Terry, Terry, thank you so much for joining me in the Coventry Box. It's been lovely to have you. Thank you so much for having me. What a final. What a final indeed. Well, IFSC competition isn't going anywhere. Briançon next week. Come and join me on the microphone where I'll be calling all of the action from a brand new wall in Briançon. Look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon for more IFSC climbing action.